monumental upset on their minds. Why not? That's why we play the game. It's Miami taking on Rutgers. past 10 this morning. This the birthplace of college football and paying homage part of the new tradition. That's Greg Schiano, the Rutgers head coach and his Scarlet Knights on the Scarlet Walk. Welcome everybody to Piscataway. Brisk and breezy the setting here at Rutgers Stadium. For the first time the number one team in the country comes to campus today. It's the Miami Hurricanes taking on the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Hi again, everybody. I'm Dave Simpson, John Ken Jimmy. Glad you could join us today. Number one is in town indeed, and they have a dynamic, I mean a dynamic combo that they're going to throw at Rutgers today. Well, Dave, it's very rare that you have two Heisman hopefuls in the same backfield, and for Miami, it all starts at quarterback with Ken Dorsey. He has the best winning percentage ever at quarterback. You at a 971 mark, and at 33-1 and one as a starter, you see him flipping it outside to Andre Johnson, his favorite target to the outside, but watch him maneuver inside the pocket. He'll buy some time for that offensive line, and for his back, Jason gathers to get in against Florida. And he plays with excitement. That's what you like to see. Another guy that's very exciting in the backfield, Willis McGahee. He comes in with 14 touchdowns and a 6.2 yard average. You see him going in from a couple yards out against Temple, but it's between the tackles where he does damage. And he's very powerful, a perfect blend of speed and power. And he does a terrific job of moving the chains and getting into the end zone for Miami. Offensively, they couldn't be more sound. Defensively, they're not too bad either, but Miami fans might have a quick of late, they've had some problems stopping the run. What right. about that? Let's hold on. It's not time for the crying <laughs> towels yet, Dave, but they do a terrific job of pursuing to the football and getting to the football. They rank nationally first against the pass. Total defense 10th and scoring defense 15th, but it's the bottom graphic. 658 yards against the last two games, Florida State and West Virginia, and 50 points. They're going to have to do something today. Maybe creep a safety, a strong safety closer to the line of scrimmage to stop Rutgers, but this defense runs to the football very well that they do the defending national champions they're unbeaten and here comes Larry Coker and his Kings today's Big East football conference game is being brought to you by ConAgra Foods we set America's table at home and away Miller High Life, the champagne of beers. Saab, people who test drive a Saab usually buy one. And by Prudential Financial, growing and protecting your wealth. Good nature shot here at Piscataway, New Jersey. One time we were here for a game and a deer ran across the field as we were preparing for a game <laughs> one morning. You see the clouds here in Piscataway, New Jersey. Miami and Rutgers coming up. And right now, let's check in for the first time with our man on the sidelines, Greg Roberts. Good afternoon, Dave. Hello, everyone. Rutgers young head coach Greg Schiano has a big decision to make today. Who will he start at quarterback? Now, that's a simple question, but it has a very complex answer. Does Schiano go with his senior, Ted Trump? Trump has started against Buffalo, Army, Pitt, and West Virginia. He led the Scarlet Knights to their only win, a 44-0 shutout of Army, but he's 1-3 in three as a starter. Or is now the time to look to the future? Schiano is debating on whether or not to hand the reins to true freshman Ryan Hart the highly talented youngster out of Coral Springs, Florida. We know Hart wants to play, but making your first collegiate start against number one Miami is a huge challenge. Shiano told us it will be a game time decision. So is it Trump or Hart? We're about to find out. Dave? All right, Greg, thank you very much. As we check out the weather, 42 degrees at the moment. There's your humidity. The winds out of the southwest at 15 miles an hour. Partly cloudy is the forecast. Miami won the toss and they've deferred and John that was one of the things we talked about Larry Coker going to take the win and when the temperature is between 40 and 49 degrees 11 and 11 all time that's one thing that Rutgers would love to hang your hat on today yeah if you're going to get Miami you got to get him when it's cold and today I think the biggest part's not the the uh, cold but the wind you know Miami will have the wind at their back in this first quarter there you see Todd Sievers and I would expect this ball to be in the end zone you can see his touchbacks 23 for the season 
within the one yard line and we are underway and that's five yards deep and they're going to keep it right there and that's a good sign for Miami that's Nathan Jones who's having a fabulous year returning kicks for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers Seavers out of Kenny Iowa 6 3 senior interesting too about Hart, the quarterback if he does get a start his dad went to Florida State and he was on record down in Miami the Miami paper said hey I hate Miami so that'll be <laughs> not a good thing yeah Hart does get the start he's a 6 2 freshman Coral Springs Florida and they're going to start first and 10 at the 20 yard line Pilch goes in motion and they're going to keep it on the ground and a nice gain to the 24 yard line and Antrell Roll made the stop on Clarence Pittman LJ Smith the go to guy but they need a big game out of Aaron Martin the split in. There you see the offensive line Mike Williamson and Devon Clark making their first starts for Rutgers and it's a daunting task against Miami. Second down at six 24 yard line just underway here at Piscataway. What a debut for the quarterback. Ryan Hart keep it on the ground again. About a two yard gain for Pittman that time. And a lot of folks there. Jonathan Vilma among those number 51 making the stop for Miami. For the Canes on that front line Matt Walters having a terrific year two sacks 24 tackles and four for losses. And that leader the linebackers Jonathan Vilmi as you said out of Coral Gable 69 total tackles and only three tackles for a loss you would expect more for him in the backfield and the defensive backs you already saw Maurice Sykes creeping up on second down look for a lot of that between him and Sean Taylor. Our referee today Dennis Hennigan will run down the rest of his crew in a moment first third down of the day third down at four from the 26 for Ryan Hart he was 0 for 6 last week in his debut against Syracuse came in as a reliever. Slant pattern hits that first down and more to the 41 yard line. Marcus Faison brought down by Sean Taylor, a gain of 14. And one of the things that Greg Shiano talked about with Faison, he likes the way the young man gets rid of the ball, John. Yeah, he does a terrific job. Fifth step, the ball is gone. There's nothing better for a young quarterback than to come into the game, just hit a little check down on third and down. It's an easy throw right in front of you. Credit the offensive line, giving him a throwing lane, a clear throwing lane for Faison. He makes his eighth reception of the season. So Rutgers completes its first third down play. On a draw this time, and Faison takes it straight ahead, gets positive yardage to about the 45-yard line. Sean Taylor again on the tackle. Well, Ryan Hart, I, I've seen this young man grow up at Cardinal Gibbons High School down in Fort Lauderdale. His junior and senior senior, his senior seasons, 3,500 yards, over 3,500 yards, and 39 touchdowns. But the best thing that he does, he manages the game. He gets rid of the football, takes a lot of pressure off of that offensive line, Dave. He will get rid of the football, and that's one of the things he'll have to learn today against a very aggressive Miami defense. Second down and six. That's Faison in motion, empty backfield, and just a little bit offside. Was number 94 for the Canes. That's William Joseph, the senior out of Miami's Edison High School. Prior to the snap, offsides on the defense, five yard penalty, remain second down. Taking another look, lower half of your screen, there you see 94, William Joseph trying to get an early jump and time that snap count. And the Miami defense takes a lot of five yard penalties, but they do make up for that with a lot of big plays. And he'll be going against Devon Clark. He's just made the move from defensive line to offensive line there you see the sophomore out of Patterson New Jersey but he's more built in to be an offensive lineman second down and one just shy of the 49 little bootleg action Hart got his man first down for Rutgers in Miami territory at the 41 yard line nice job by Loomis on that catch Chris Loomis the sophomore tight end out of Maple Shade New Jersey brought down by my Maurice Sykes Nice play call, just breaking containment. Miami, a lot of pressure in the middle, but a nice throw and catch on the outside. As you said, the backup tight end, Chris Loomis making the catch. Terrific start for this Rutgers offense. A lot of things working, right? Bill Cubitt, the offensive coordinator. And you can see the poise for Hart standing in. Doing a nice job. He's got Martin in the slot to his right. Miami brings a couple of people up on the line in the box, short drop. 
Check down. Got He's got it. open. Morton's right there. He's got it down the sideline. Aaron Morton to the win. It'll be first and goal for the Lucky Scarlet Knights. That's a gain of 40 yards. And how about Hart again looking for his second receiver? Well, he may have been 0-6 last week, but he's right on the mark today is Ryan Hart, the freshman quarterback. Just a perfect throw, and I think it's helping him going against the wind. The other way the balls were sailing in pregame, you can really get excited about the way they're starting the game. You see Ryan, look at the sidelines. Very calm, very cool, good demeanor for a quarterback starting against the number one team in the country. That was Aaron Martin's 16th catch. Longest of the season, quick count. Pittman, he's in, touchdown Rutgers. Rutgers on the board first against number one Miami. Clarence Pittman with the score, his first of the season. Well, that'll get you excited. That's a terrific opening drive by this Rutgers offense and the quarterback, Ryan Hart. You see Pittman going in from the one yard line, just a little crease off the right side, just enough to squeeze the football over the goal line. And it's six nothing Scarlet Knights. Just the fourth rushing touchdown for Greg Schiano's crew. Point after, here's Sands. And he knocks it through. So 11.26 to go. First quarter, Greg Schiano's Rutgers Scarlet Knights. They get the ball and they take it right down the field, go 80 yards, get a seventh spot on the board. Pittman with the one yard plunge, the big play, the 40 yard connection, Hart to Martin. Miami's got the ball when we come back. Well, Northwestern High School out of Miami. Their alum, Clarence Pittman, has Rutgers on the board, capping an 80-yard drive, where Hart went three for three for 64 yards. The big hook up a 40-yarder to Aaron Martin. And Rutgers, the last three games versus Miami, look at that, they've already done much better than they have in the first, in the last three games. And Larry Coker on a deficit early on. Well, how impressive is that just to take the opening kickoff and stick it really right down Miami's throat? And defensively, Miami's been reeling in the last two football games. They've allowed 50 points in the last two games to Florida State and West Virginia. And basically, they've done it with uh, the running game. But that was a great mix of run and pass and breaking contain by the young Ryan Hart. So look for Rutgers to, to feed off of that. They started against Tennessee with an opening kickoff of 100 yards on the way back. So this is not uh, unusual territory territory in the last couple of weeks uh, for Rutgers. Here's Michael Cortese out of Jackson, New Jersey. He's kicking up to Jason Gethers, number three, and Jared Payton, son of the late Pro Football Hall of Famer. And uh, until last Sunday, the all-time leading rusher in NFL history, Walter Payton. We talked about the brisk and breezy conditions here. They're going to have to hold the ball. It's already blown off the tee a couple of times. Yeah, look for Miami to get great field position. There you see the average of 18.5 for Jason Gathers. Look for Miami to get great field position because Rucker kicking into a very stiff wind. And you can see that Peyton and Gathers, they are way up the field, closer to the 15 yard line. Lutizzi got into this one pretty good, but it comes down at the six for Peyton. Peyton looking for room and finds a penalty flag coming in as a return gets across the 25 to the 26 yard line. Ball came loose, but there were two flags thrown on that play. There's a look at Jared, a junior out of Arlington Heights, Illinois. And it's a hold against Miami. Dennis Hennigan, the referee, the umpires, Greg Brenner, head linesman Carl Logan, line judge Wayne Mackey, side judge Howard Curry. Field judge is Rich Street. The back judge is Gary Danowitz. Or Danowitz, beg your pardon. There are two penalties on the play. Holding on Miami is declined. Illegal block below the waist on Miami will be accepted. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. Illegal block below the waist. That is the penalty that's accepted. How about Ken Dorsey? Only 33 and one as a starter. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> What'd he do that game? Wow. Just incredible numbers for a terrific quarterback. Just shy of 56%, 1,828 yards, 18 touchdowns, seven picks. Miami starting at its own 11. Beards in motion. And McGahey looking for Roman. Dances and dodges for a couple brought down by Brian Bender.
Kellen Winslow Jr., number 81, right in the middle. Dynamic tight end, leading receiver on this ball club with 26 catches. Yeah, I think this next crew, this offensive line, is going to have to have a big day, and it all starts with Ken Dorsey's roommate, Brett Romberg, out of Canada, out of Windsor, Ontario, in the middle. Rutgers leading 7-0. They went 80 yards on the first possession of the game. Seven plays, 334. Pittman, one-yard run. Here's Dorsey's first throw. Got a man down there. It's first down yardage for Beard across the 21 to about the 23-yard line. That'll pick up a first down. Nathan Jones with the tackle for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Rutgers going to need a big game out of Raheem Moore and Will Burnett. A couple of New Jersey guys. In Jordan the linebacker. And yeah, and in the linebacker spot, Gary Brackett, 80 total tackles, 11 tackles for loss for minus 45 yards. And on the corner, Nathan Jones out of Scotch Plains, New Jersey, has two 100 yard kickoff returns and doesn't play that bad on the corner. He has one interception. Inches away from a first down. After that catch by Beard, Beard with his 19th catch of the season. See the distance, about the length of the football. A second and one. Expecting a crowd of about 25, 30,000 here at Rutgers Stadium. At Hall Park holds about 42,000. A lot of clouds right now. Larry Coker's club. They left temperatures in the 90s down in Miami. Yeah, third and inches as Ken Dorsey. There you see his season statistics: 1,828 yards and 18 touchdowns, and it leads the Big East. There's a tight end in motion. Dorsey turns. McGahee to the edge and hell on 30. Foot race again. Big play for Willis McGahey. Look at the speed down the sideline. Jones finally brings him down at the 11 yard line. They needed inches and they got several miles. First down, Miami. That's a run. From his own 20, picks up 68 yards. Yeah, and that's his season high. 68 came in with a long of 48, but we talked about him in the open. Just a perfect blend of power and speed. He can make the tough yards in between the tackles, but on third and inches, just gets a terrific block on the outside, and he's to the races. Just a terrific back. You see his vision just pops it outside, and then it was a foot race, and 32, Nathan Jones was able to get him, but he leads the Big East with 14 touchdowns and a 6.6 .6 average. Closing in on a thousand yards again. First and 10, 12 yard line. Dorsey pumps, throws in the end zone. Got a man down there, an overthrow as he tried to hook up with Andre Johnson, the junior from Miami Senior High School. And it looks like number 91, Ryan Neal, the defensive end for Rutgers, still down on the play. Ryan Neal, son, uh, son of Bill Neal, played defensive tackle for the Giants, football Giants from 1981 to 1983. Yeah, and a graduate of the University of Pittsburgh was a big uh, guy in that defensive front when they had all their success in the late 70s. The Greg Shiano's club holding on to a lead right now, but certainly being challenged big time by the number one team in the country. 68-yard run by Willis McGahey. See if we can take another look, Dave. Top right of your screen, number 91, coming down to try to get to Ken Dorsey. Just a chop block there by the tailback, it looked like. Willis McGahey down around the knees, and that's exactly what happened to a, a pursuing Ryan Neal. Rutgers coming off a 45-14 loss at Syracuse last week. They gave up 21 points in the fourth quarter. Brandon Hall had a 90 yard return of a missed field goal that was blocked by Nathan Jones that gave him a seven nothing lead. The Nathan Jones he had he accounted for the other score 100 yard kickoff return. <laughs> Meanwhile Ken Dorsey. Put that over a good looking fall scene here at the Scataway. He's got a chance to move up one more notch in every category. He's close in, in just about every category. It's been the last couple of weeks he's really come on. He, he's been a little bit of a roller coaster ride for him, but last week he threw for a career high 422 yards to lead Miami in that win at West Virginia. So they get Neal off the field. Dave, Al Barnaby gets a chance to, to, to play now. It's a great spot to look for your tight end. Kellen Winslow, one of the best. They give it to McGahee. And he's tackled inside by Gary Brackett, the middle linebacker, second in the conference coming into today's game in tackles behind Clifton Smith, the middle linebacker at Syracuse. And he's a big young man, 6'4", 280, the senior. 
five tackles for a loss uh, coming into this game, and that's really going to have to do their damage. This defensive front is really going to have to bow their backs right now on third and long and keep Miami out of the end zone. Miami's coming off a 40-23 win at West Virginia, win number 499 all the time, and this is what Miami's done in the red zone. Very, very productive. Dorsey looking, steps, throws, a little bit too low as he tried to get it to Johnson. Coverage in there by Nathan Jones. And so Rutgers is held. It's going to force Miami to kick a field goal. And credit this defensive front for Rutgers for really collapsing the pocket on Ken Dorsey. There was nowhere for Ken really to feel comfortable and step up and throw this football. He tried to fit it into a very tight window to his favorite target, Andre Johnson, but a huge pressure from the outside. Number one or gets to Dorsey, and that's they have to make Ken Dorsey feel uncomfortable for Rutgers to be successful today. 29 yards on this attempt coming up from Todd Seavers. Six of 11 on the season. And he's able to bang that one through. So a 68 yard run by McGee. The highlight of the scoring drive. The Rutgers fans appreciated that only a field goal was yielded here. 9.24 to go in the first. It's Rutgers by four. Football from Piscataway, New Jersey. Miami and Rutgers have each had it once and they both scored. Rutgers leading the Hurricanes 7-3. Now it's time for the ConAgra Foods Flavor of Tailgating Report. Brought to you by ConAgra Foods. We set America's table. We're in Piscataway, New Jersey, home of the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. And that handsome suit of armor belongs to Bill and James Umstetter. They do it right, folks. Champagne breakfast. That's eggs, French toast, candles, tablecloth, wind protector, even carpet and look who stopped by up, Rutgers yeah, athletic yeah, director yeah, Bob Mulcahy hey I'm telling you guys when the AD comes by and hangs out with the tailgaters right. I'll toast to that anytime Dave I'm sure those folks brought their checkbooks as well how do we get that gig Dave Great job. I, no champagne for us we go to West Virginia a couple weeks ago we don't get it to really eat lunch with Greg Greg gets all the good gigs I'm telling you <laughs> He sets it up. Champagne with Greg. <laughs> he brought his own. <laughs> Rutgers, their last lead against Miami. Got to go back to 1995. See the wind condition. Seaver's going to get some help. Teammate holding the ball. And here we go. Jones going to get a chance. Three yard line. He's got two 100 yarders to his credit. Finds some room. Finds room again. He's to the edge. Look at this guy go. He's at the 40. And they chase him out of bounds at about the 46 yard line. Another outstanding kick return by Nathan Jones. Went right out of bounds by Roscoe Paris. That one covered 43 yards for Jones, who's fourth in the NCAA. Dave, we talked about his two 100-yard returns against Buffalo and against Tennessee, but this one goes right up the middle, and he almost brings it to the outside. Roscoe Parrish on the outside, and Seavers trying to bang him out of bounds, but not until he gets close to the 45-yard line. You really have to make the first guy miss, and then you're on your own, and he does a terrific job. He finds the wall, gets to the outside, and gets instant field position for the young quarterback, Ryan Hart. Top kick returner in the Big East Conference and number four nationally. Look at this setup. Greg Schiano did tell us yesterday in his conversation, I said, you're going to bring some things out of the bag, and he said, yes, a little L tackle eligible. Gets it up to close to midfield. Try anything here. You've taken on the number one team in the country. That's Val Barnaby. He's a backup defensive end. And he's getting a chance. His first catch of the season. Well, he'll get a lot of laughs when he gets to the sidelines. He'll be telling all the guys on the defensive line, you check me out there with the hands? <laughs> Barnaby, freshman, 6'5", 255. He's out of Franklin, New Jersey. So a pickup of five on that play right to midfield. Big hole for Pittman. Pittman, who has the only touchdown of the game. He was initially hit. Secondary hit was by Jerome McDougal. One of the DBs, Maurice Sykes, got him. It was the first contact. Yeah, you called it. Maurice Sykes did an excellent job along with McDougal getting up and trying to stop Rutgers right at midfield. They do cross to the Miami 48-yard line, but this Miami defense reeling right now in the Second series, they're down 7-3, and Sykes and company need to uh, make a big play on third down here. Part four for four. 
69 yards to this point. There's Rutgers last in the Big East and third down conversion. There's Hart. Room for Pittman. Matt Walters really blew that play up number 91. Pittman thought he had a lot more average, but uh, yards on that carry, but Walters had terrific penetration. Yeah, and call it DJ Williams. Glad to get join us for Big East football. Number one Miami. First time a number one team has been on campus here at Rutgers, taking on the Scarlet Knights here in Piscataway, New Jersey. And that's going to set up a fourth and one. So Greg Shiano is going to have to punt. Dave Sims, John Kinjemi, and Greg Roberts. Ball's at the 46 yard line of Miami. Here's Mike Barr. Third in the Big East in punting, 53rd national. Average of 40.5 yards. Does a directional kick. Let's see what they'll give him credit to. He gets another one inside the 20. So that's a job well done. And that's his 18th kick inside the 20 yard line for Mike Barr, the senior out of Lynchburg, Virginia. That's a 35 yard effort. 7 4 to go in the first, 7 3 Rutgers. Year old Greg Schiano out of Whitecoff, New Jersey, former defensive coordinator at Miami. In his second year here at Rutgers, it's been a tough go. Three and 16 is his record. The ball club is one and seven overall this year, 0 and 4 in the Big East. Had he stayed at Miami a little longer before jumping on his Miami job, he might have gotten the head coaching job at Miami and not Larry Coke. Yeah, probably. He probably missed that window by about three weeks. Which Davis, of course, leaving to go to the Cleveland Browns. Second time Miami's had the ball. They started the first drive at the 11, this one at the 12. Quick count. McGahee, big running room again, right side. Penalty flag coming in late. As he got it up to about the 19 yard line, Brian Bender made the tackle. McGahee's got some burst. Gonna back him up, a hold against Miami. Right now, let's check in with Greg Roberts. Dave, I wanted to bring you up to date on the uh, status of Ryan Neal, the sophomore defensive tackle for Rutgers. The Rutgers medical staff is telling me that he has injured his right knee. They put a brace on that knee to immobilize it, and they are icing it down. Looks like he's done for here in the first half. They say they will reevaluate at halftime. Dave? All right, Greg, thank you. So that means a lot of work for Dr. Bob Monaco and David McCune, the team trainer. We'll work on Mr. Neal there. Right now, Rutgers defensively a fabulous defensive field position. First and 15 for Miami, back at the seven after the hole. And Miami may try a, a little play action with a quick strike here. Three penalties, 21 yards for Miami. McGahee on the cutback, not a lot there. Good job by Alfred Peterson, number 92, who's the uh, playing at right defensive end today. With Neal out, had the shuffle. That defensive line. You know, Miami does a good job of recruiting within the state of Florida, but Rutgers is trying to recruit the state of New Jersey and the state of Florida, and they do a good job, and that's one of the guys right there, Alfred Peterson out of Miami, Florida, Carroll City High School. Greg Shiano has got billboards down there. He's on a radio show on a regular basis. Here's Dorsey. Out patter. has got Winslow. First down, 25. Nice move. Close to the 34-yard line. First catch of the day by Kellen Winslow Jr. Brought down by Brian Bender. How about Winslow? Top receiver, almost 13 a catch, four touchdowns, and he's a game breaker, 24 yarder right there. What a terrific double move by Kellen Winslow. Just a double move on the out and a nice pitch and catch to the outside. Not many tight ends can line up at the wide receiver position and run the route like a wide receiver. Kellen Winslow can do that. He was converted from high school from a wide out to tight end. And how scary is this? Jeremy Shockey should still be in Miami starting at tight end. How about that? And they would have used them both too. Rutgers brings a blitz. Dorsey flushed. Penalty flag on the play. Dorsey got a man down field. It stands at the 30. Down the sideline and brought down at the 11 yard line. Ethnic Sands, the senior out of Miami. Brought down by Brandon Hall. How about Dorsey on the move? Running for his life, a 56 yard hookup. And it's coming back, Dave. That might have been one of the best throws on the run I've ever seen by a college quarterback. What a terrific throw. Full speed by Ken Dorsey and hits number seven, Ethnic Sands, dead in stride, but it's all coming back. That's not a part of the game that's high up on the charts and part of uh, the repertoire of Dorsey. Illegal motion on the offense. Five yard so penalty. Motion brings his first down. down. 
Ken Dorsey's not known for his his feet, but right here he does an excellent job of squaring up his shoulders at the last minute and throwing a bullet down to Ethnic Sands right in dead stride. And Brandon Hall brings him down around the 10 yard line, but it brings Miami back inside to 30. But what a throw and great presence uh, by Ken Dorsey to scan the entire field. He didn't have a receiver to that side, but found Ethnic Sands. Most in the Big East. That's one thing they'd like to take off their ledger. Toss play. McGahey with blockers in front. Boy, look at the acceleration as he saw the hole and got through it across the 35 to about the 37 yard line. Got brought down by Greg Pismuka, number 99. Dave, that's one of the things you'll notice about the running back, Willis McGahey. It only takes him maybe one or two steps to hit full stride and full speed. And once he gets going north and south, he will finish the run. You'll see him lower his shoulder and take on would be tacklers. And that's a, a good back will finish the run. Willis McGahey does a terrific job of finishing. Seven yards on that pickup, five carries, 81 yards to this point. Dorsey drops it, got to get on it, and he does. Back at the 25 yard line, they lose 11 on that box play, so that'll bring up a third and 19. Looks like he stuck the football in for the play action fake and just gets the hip or the elbow of his tailback, Willis McGahee. I think Willis's right elbow caught the football, and, and Kenny lucky to get back on that football for Miami. It brings up a big third and 19, though. Rutgers and this crowd trying to get into it. Larry Coker, there you see him on the sideline. Miami third down conversions for the season. That leads the Big East at 47.3%. As we showed you earlier, my, Rutgers is last in, on their side of the ball with third down. Loss of 11 on that play. From the 25, Dorsey at time, throws over the middle, got it in there, but it's short of a first down. He got it to Kevin Beard, the junior from Plantation, Florida. He's going to be a good two yards short. Picks up 17 on that play, and here comes the punt team again, and the Rutgers fans roar their approval. Fourth down and two at the 42. Well, good stand by the Rutgers defense, but a good sign from Miami. Ken Dorsey's throwing it in small windows today, and I think he's going to have plenty of opportunities to throw it today. Freddie Capshaw, two-time All-Big East performer, gets into this one. And down at the 20, and taken down quickly. Wasted very little time on that one. A 38-yard return. And a good fair, the fair catch by Sean Seabrooks. Sure to join us next week as the Boston College Eagles travel to Morgantown to battle Avon Coburn and the Mountaineers from West Virginia. Or you'll see the Temple Owls head to Pittsburgh to take on Rod Rutherford and the Pittsburgh Panthers. BC at West Virginia or Temple at Pittsburgh next Saturday afternoon starting at noon. Check your local listings for the game in your area. So here's Rutgers with the ball again. It'll be first and 10 for the Scarlet Knights. Ball's at the 21 yard line. On the delay, penalty flag on the top of your screen there. As he got the ball to Pittman, brought down by William Joseph. A lot of penalties today, Jeff. Yeah, and that time it was Rutgers jumping the gun a little bit on first down. Great yeah, trying to find out. It on, yeah. Give me a on name offense, or a number. The penalty is declined. Second down. So no surprise after two-yard loss, second down and 12. John, what's your thought? You played at both levels. Should they announce at the college level, you know, who it is as they uh, do in the pros? I, probably. I, I think it wouldn't hurt anybody. I mean, right now you've got kids that are exposed to just about everything. I don't think it's going to hurt their, their feelings much. Well, cluster at the bottom of your screen here for Rutgers. Hart's going to throw it. They flush him, throws it under the oh, almost picked off by Vilma. Does it, if he makes the catch, he's gone. LJ Smith, the intended receiver. Vilma, Big East All Academic team. Last season, a junior out of Coral Gables. When that first series, Ryan Hart had plenty of time to scan the field. Right there, William Joseph, big number 94, was in his face, and he almost throws the football right to Jonathan Vilma. But look at that pocket collapse in number 94, William Joseph in on the hurry. That's 20 quarterback pressures on the season. Rector so far, one out of two third down conversions. They face a third and 12 here. 7-3, Scarlet Knights. 
Swing pass. Faison, 25, 30. Looks like he's got the first down. Had to get past the 31. He does. First down, Rutgers. Gain of 13. Brought down by Roger McIntosh. Nice throw on the dump off to the outside. You see him. The quarterback was retreating. He felt pressure, but a nice job to get the football outside. And Marcus Faison did a, a good job of going north and south. Not a lot of dancing when he got the football because too much team speed to dance today against Miami. You have to get the football and do something with it. And that's exactly what the freshman did out of Fort Lauderdale. Eighth catch of the season for Faison. Pilgrim at fullback right now. First and 10 at the 33. Coming up with two and a half to go here in the first quarter. Faison doesn't get through the hole that time, then lose about a yard. How about the penetration by Miami on that one? You had DJ Williams, you had Andrew Williams, number 99. And you had double wide Vince Wilfork, number 75, <laughs> coming down. Double wide because he's 6'2, 350, the sophomore out of Boynton Beach, just swallowing up the, the running attack that time for Rutgers. How about Miami, the luxury they have. What do they go? Eight, eight, eight or nine? Outstanding yeah. D linemen. There you see his season statistics, seven tackles for a loss, make it eight now, and four sacks. Back at the 32, a second and 11, Rex snap. Phase out, 35, 39 yard line, picks up seven. So why not use some trickery? Why not, number six, Antrell Roll makes the stop. Dave, you alluded to it earlier that Rutgers was going to try to do everything they had in their playbook today to, to try to slow down Miami's defense. And that's what happens here. The direct snap. You see the quarterback hard go in motion and Faison's the only one in the backfield. You know what he's going to do with it. Try to go north and south and try to get a first down. Brings third and three for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Top of your screen, Aaron Martin caught the big 68 yard in the first quarter early in the game. He's limping. Empty backfield. Here's Hart underneath. Yeah. Nice catch. Faison. First down in Miami territory at the 49 yard line. Brought down by DJ Williams at game of 11. Dave, it's the same route that they ran on third down in their first series. The tight end clears for the tailback coming underneath. Just an easy check down, and they're going to let Miami open up the middle of the football field. Watch how the middle of the football field opens up. The tight end to the right clears out L.J. Smith. He'll create two or three white jerseys going outside, and then Faison comes right against the grain for the first down. Martin at the top of your screen. There's Pilch in motion. Toss play. Faison, good read. But he's taken down at the line of scrimmage. There's that team speed again. Wow. Vilma got in there. Most teams that might have got four or five yards. Miami, they lose about a half a yard. When you play against Miami, it's almost like taking the next step from college to the NFL. How you always hear that the holes close up and they're a lot smaller. That's exactly what Miami does to you. It looked like that was going to be, as you said, a three, four, five yard game. But Jonathan Vilma coming in from that middle linebacker spot like a bullet. You see 29 tackles in the last two games. He's been very active. If you see the football, you're going to see 51. Jonathan Vilma. His defensive coordinator Randy Shannon says, hey, don't worry about being the man trying to do more. Just do what you usually do. That's why he's picked it up the last few games. Here's Hart. Straight up the gut. Oh, nothing doing there. William Joseph, the senior from Edison High School. Wow, what a play that was. Candidate for All-American, Lombardi Award, Outman Trophy, Nagurski Award, and Big East Defensive Player of the Year. <laughs> what else? <laughs> not too no, shabby. No, not at all. No gain on that play. That play concludes the first quarter. Not a bad first quarter. A lot of offensive action. It's 7-3 Rutgers heading to the second 15 minutes. Good look at College Avenue. Part of Rutgers College, part of the Rutgers University, the State University of New Jersey. Welcome back, everybody. Start of the second quarter here at Rutgers Stadium. Scarlet Knights leading number one Miami 7-3. And Rutgers looking at a third down and 10 from the Miami 49. Miami has seen Rutgers convert three of four third down opportunities. Hard play fake. Got time. Deep ball. Man there. Picked off. Here we come the other way. Miami down the near sideline. And that's to the 30. Sean Taylor made the great read and brought it all the way back 48 yards. As you said, Sean Taylor coming from the backside of the defense. 
the quarterback, the young quarterback, Ryan Hart, never saw him trying to get to his tight end down the middle of the field, L.J. Smith, and you never see the backside corner or the backside safety comes right in. If he doesn't catch it, Maurice Sykes might get it. But Sean Taylor, with his second interception of the season, goes down the Rutgers sideline, close to the 20-yard line at the 21, and Miami instant field position for Ken Dorsey. Taylor, the number three tackler on this ball club, at 10 tackles last week at West Virginia. Going for the gusto outside McGahee. Picks up a blocker, fights his way to about the 10 yard line. Nice job by the fullback to come back. Quadrine Hill throw a block. William Burnett with the tackle. Yeah, no stranger to big plays on the passing game. It looks like Willis McGahee may be limping going out for Miami, but a, a huge play for that Miami defense. And they get to Hart early in the first play of the second quarter and give Miami scoring position now, knocking on the door at the 10 yard line. Pretty good play to get it going here. Jason Gathers is the deep back now. Tight end goes in motion. That's Winston. Gathers. He got hit in the backfield. Good play by Brian Bender, the senior from Shenandoah, Pennsylvania. There's a look at Brian. 26th in Big East tackles this year, 53 on the season, now 54. Yeah, you talk about Gary Brackett a lot, but Brian Bender coming from that strong side linebacker position, making the uh, running attack from Jason Gathers feel a little bit more uncomfortable. I'd look for Ken Dorsey right now to put the football up. You see the season stats for Bender, 53 tackles, as you said, now 54 and five for a loss. Hill and Gathers, the deep backs. Gathers gets the call. I tell you what, slow developing play. Rutgers all over. Penalty flag coming in late. McGee, he's on the bench. And that's why Gathers is in there. Gathers is junior from Delray Beach, Florida, with the Spanish River. Check that from Delray Beach High School, Spanish River, New Jersey. In Florida, rather beg your pardon, as Hennigan shows us, that is Hennigan shows us a penalty against Rutgers. Okay, they're calling a face mask, Dave, against this Rutgers defense. Face mask on the defense. Penalty is half the distance to the goal from the line of scrimmage. Repeat second down. Let's check out the Ameritrade out of town scores and the Mountaineers just down the road in Philadelphia lead by three touchdowns against Temple. Iowa good looking club in the Big Ten. Taking on six and three, Wisconsin will score in the second quarter. Ball's at the five, second and goal at the five. Dorsey making a play change. He's got Andre Johnson split wide to the left, toss play. Together, boy, that was met beautifully. Bender strung it out, and then number 23, Sean Seabrooks, finished it off. Good defensive stand there by Rutgers. Terrific job by Seabrooks finishing it off, and as you said, a good play up front. Bender set the table, and Sean Seabrooks came to dinner and ate everything. Number 23, the free safety, the senior out of Patterson, New Jersey. Three and a half tackles for a loss for minus eight yards on the season. A third and six for this defense. Can they make the stand and keep Miami out for the second time? Rutgers fans coming to life again. Third down and five, just underway second quarter. 7-3 Rutgers. Pittman one yard run, a Seavers 29 yard field goal to score. And here's Dorsey, pump fake, throws, end zone, knocked down! That was knocked down by Gary Brackett, number 41. No flags. It's gonna bring on the field goal team again. Yeah, and Ken Dorsey wanted his receiver to come flat in front of number 41, Gary Bender. He's counting on him to come flat. You see number nine drifting up the field, Kevin Beard. That's what Ken Dorsey was mad about going off the field. If you're wide out, you can't leave your quarterback hanging out there. 23-yard attempt, Seavers. And he knocks it through. 12-27 to go. And Rutgers still leading number one Miami at 7-6. The field goal by Seavers, his second today. Eighth on the season. Big defensive play right there by Rutgers. Scarlet Knights lead by one. Rutgers by one over Miami. Miami has two field goals on the board, but 
they have Rutgers defensively, so that's a nice thing. Yeah, Brian Bender, 42, the first guy in the backfield, and then Sean Seabrooks comes up and delivers the knockout punch to number three, Jason Gathers, and then a huge breakup in the middle, 41 on third, third down. Gary Brackett comes in and, and breaks it up for the defense. They've been, Miami's been inside the 10 twice now, and this defense for Rutgers has held them to six points. So a terrific job by the Rutgers defensive unit starting this football game. They've done a very, very good job. And they don't rank very high, Dave, in a lot of statistics. 77th in total defense this year, 384 yards they've given up. Jones about a yard deep. Fake the reverse, he's in no man's land now. And that little second and a half indecision cost them at least 10 yards. Yeah, this is one team you cannot stop and start against is uh, Miami with team speed. They will get you. And Nathan Jones is very good at, at returning kicks, but you cannot stop and then start again. Miami just too fast for that. So this is clearly the worst field position for Rutgers today. They started out with the ball at the 20, their own 45. They got it at the 21, but this time the 13 yard line. Good matchup coming up here with the bottom of your screen, Aaron Martin. Bottom of your screen going against Alfonso Marshall, a sophomore from Clewiston, Florida. Delay game. Five yard penalty remains first down. How did that happen? I, I don't know if they ever reset the clock, but there could have been the 25 to seconds believe. to go by. Wow, that's a bad call. Well, I'd like to see an explanation on that one. So a delay of game. It's already at, it's already at 12 seconds now. I think they botched yeah, the first call. Something wrong here. That's what happened to Rutgers on first down. Very interesting. All right, first and 15 at the eight. Seven six. Rutgers in the lead on number one Miami. Straight up the gut to about the 10 yard line, about a two yard pickup for Clarence Pittman, Roger McIntosh as the Mountaineers tack on another three. 24 nothing as we check out the Ameritrade out of town scores. Iowa with three spot number 10 this week. The Iowa Hawkeyes and Michigan pouring in on Michigan State. That's at Ann Arbor. Second down at 13 balls at the 10. For Ryan Hart, the freshman quarterback, making his first college start here. Hangs in and down he goes. First guy had him. The second guy puts him away. What a combination in there. You've got Cornelius Green with the finishing touches. Andrew Williams got him first. He had nowhere to throw the football. Good coverage down the field. You see Green was first on the play and then Williams 99 coming in. It was the one two punch from this Miami front four. Just relentless number 69 Howard Blackwood had no chance to get back in position to block anybody too much speed up front by Green initially and then the cleanup job by Williams number 99 first sack of the day. Loss of three third down at 16 ball ball up to seven look out we're going to fall on it for safety to kick it out of bounds for the safety. Bad snap. Good job by Pittman to get it out of there. And Miami takes the lead at 8-7. to seven. Well, a bad snap initially, but an alert play by Pittman, number two. Just a low snap by 52, Pizmuka, the center. And then watch the tailback alertly picking it up and throwing it out of bounds because if he gets stripped by the football, Miami falls on it. It's a touchdown. He doesn't take that chance. Clarence Pittman just throws it out of the end zone. And you see the offensive line and coach in the center getting together and talking about that last snap. You can't you can't put it together if you don't get the center quarterback exchange and in a shotgun. Pizmuka has to be accurate. No doubt about it. Let's check in with Greg Roberts. Guys, I've been watching Rutgers center Marty Pizmuka very closely. He is snapping with his left hand. That's not his normal snap hand. Against Tennessee, he broke bones in his right wrist. Did he? Did it sideline him? No, of course not. He had it operated on. They said pins in it. He decided he'd go ahead and learn how to snap with his left hand. It's colder. He's been doing a great job. You saw a direct snap earlier in the ball game. No, really, no botched exchanges between the young quarterback and the center. But right there, apparently, perhaps for the first time, snapping with 
that left hand has cost them. Dave? Three, thank you, Greg. Three straight scores now by Miami to take an 8-7 lead with 10.54 to go here in the second quarter. So the safety brings on Mike Barr for the free kick. Not bad, but Miami's going to be in great shape. Here's Sands. And Sands is taken down 36 yard line. Good coverage by Rutgers. They got Leslie Collins in on the tackle. Eight to seven Miami. Miami, the number one team of the country. We're here in Piscataway, New Jersey, birthplace of college football for Big East football. I'm Dave Sims with John Kinjemi and Greg Roberts. Rutgers got off to a good start after that opening kickoff, John. They sure did. They put a damper on Larry Coker coming out in, in New Jersey, but the Rutgers offense was the story early. The young quarterback going up to the CC there. Count. To the score early in the football game, Pittman going up over the top for the touchdown brings us to 8-7 to seven, Miami. Here's Darcy. Home run ball. Got a man running free. And can't get it to Kevin Beard. Beard covered by Nate Jones on that deep crossing pattern. Ken Dorsey going to be number one in just about everything at Miami in passing. Pretty good day so far. McGay, he broke a big one, 68 yards to set up the first field goal. Ryan Hart got off to a good start. And Rutgers enjoyed its first lead in a long time over the, over the Miami Hurricanes. Yeah, I look for a big day from Ken Dorsey. He's really throwing the football well and hanging in the pocket, making good decisions. Dorsey, 4 of 8, 58 yards. Throws underneath Winslow. Winslow fights through a tackle, gets the ball to the 40, call it the 45 yard line. So a pickup of 8. Pass was complete to Kellen Winslow. Brian Holman that knocked him out of bounds. Very strong tight end at 6'5, 230, the sophomore out of San Diego, California. Kellen Winslow, look at the balance, just the left hand on the ground, keeps his balance to get a couple more yards to bring it to the third and very short, a third and short two for Miami. Second catch today for Winslow. He's got 32 yards. Third down and two for Miami at its own 45 yard line. Dorsey looks left, throws left, got a man too high. It's intercepted by Brandon Hall, his third of the season, and went right through the hands of Andre Johnson. Well, great concentration on the corner by Ha, 24. Ken Dorsey trying to go to the quick slant to the outside to Andre Johnson. He's going into this stiff wind. That ball may have just stayed up in the air a little bit longer than he wanted to. Almost a terrific catch, but great concentration by the cornerback. As you said, Dave, his third pick of the year, but Miami turning the football over early. Now it's Rutgers offense with great field position at the 38 yard line. You see Ken Dorsey knew he threw the football high. One of those he'd love to have back. Can't get the string on that one. See what Rutgers does after the turnover. Straight up to get this time. And pretty good run by Faison to about the 42 yard line. Picks up four. DJ Williams number 17 there to make the tackle. In talking with Coach Yano yesterday, he talked about his running game and how teams have been able to run the football in Miami. And he said, even if we don't run it well early, we have to stay after it because it may pay off in the third quarter if we can just hang around. Let's get through the first quarter, hang around. Let's get through the second quarter. Just stay close. And that's exactly what they're doing. Who would have thought at this juncture, 9.57 to go in the second. <laughs> not right not high. Hey, you got that right. Down a point. Miami's made the last three scores. Here's another delay. Faison. Looking for some running. Look at that team speed. I mean, it's just amazing. DJ Williams, you saw number 95 in there making the tackle as well. That's uh, Jerome McDougal. And Dave, it's just not one guy. When you're writing down the stats for Miami's defense, you can't say, well, Jamal Green's the guy, or William Joseph, or Andre Williams, or Vince Wolfolk. It's just about everybody. And once they get knocked down, like DJ Williams there, 17, he's right back on for a half a, a tackle, and he's right next to the football carrier, as McDougal is, and, and Jonathan Vilma. They all run very, very well. Third and five at the 43. Rutgers three for six on third downs today. Hart, short drive, unloads. Oh, and got knocked down by Vilma as they were trying to get it to the tight end. Check that, that was number 84, Josh Hobbs, the intended receiver. So Vilma knocks it down. 
Vilma staying at home, watching the quarterback's eyes, number 51 in the middle of the screen. You see him taking a look around. He's about ready to go outside and just had enough athletic ability to bring that left hand up and outside to get the pass for the would-be wide receiver coming across the middle. Looked like Tucker may it have was, been it was the intended receiver. And you see Mike Barr, his first punt going 35 yards. It's a boom one here, so Rutgers can't pay off the interception. Short punt. Coverage out, ran the punt out of bounds at the 22 yard line. So a good starting spot here, 35 yards again for Mike Barr on that punt. Biggie's football just under nine to play, a one point Miami lead. Correctly, eight to seven. Miami number one over Rutgers in time now for a look at the Army of One brought to you by the United States Army as we flash back to the 91 Hurricane Club coached by Dennis Erickson knocked off Nebraska in the Orange Bowl and Gino Toretta it was his Heisman Trophy year just over 3,000 yards on that season. Yeah, what a team that was. And this team, you talk about dynasties at Miami from last year to this year. They lose so many players to graduation and early graduation and defection to the NFL. This team has a chance to string national championships back to back. Tethers in place of McGahee. He goes in motion. Here's Dorsey. Throw outside. Beard. Pretty elusive. And he's taken down at the 25 yard line. Good coverage. Holman there. Number 49, the junior from Bergenfield, New Jersey. Well, great awareness by Kevin Beard not to go to the outside after the reception. He came to the inside, but terrific pursuit by that Rutgers defense. Ken Dorsey may be a little frustrated right now that it's not that easy. Let's check in with Greg Roberts. Dave, you see Willis McGay, he has returned to the ball game. He left earlier. He's been battling turf toe for the last couple weeks. It flared up again, but he's right back at it. Dave? Greg, thank you. Kevin Beard with that last catch, three catches, 27 yards. Here's McGee. He bounces it outside, runs through a tackler. Hello! Penalty flag on the play. That's a Heisman Trophy tackle run there, Greg. That's good looking run, John, as it gets down the sideline. Let's see if it's going to come back. Rutgers, fan, Rutgers players are clapping. That was a 28 yard pickup. Well, Dave, if Willis McGahee's hurting, he didn't show it on that play. Sure didn't. Holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, repeat second down. We talked about Willis McGahee. The first guy really never brings him down, and, and a great example of that right here. Watch the first point of contact right there. Brian Bender gets him, and then the defensive back, 32, Nathan Jones tries to bring him down, but that's that power and speed we talked about in the open. There's the hold from behind. It looked like right there by one of the linemen trying to help out down the football field, but just a, a great run. Second and 10 at the 22. Here's a delay to McGahee again, and he can't outrun Holman. Holman makes another nice play. Brian Holman. Came in with 31 tackles on the season. Last year, played in 10 games, started four and hit 38 tackles. Yeah, nice play that time by Holman. Back-to-back -back plays, open field too. Tough to bring down number two, Willis McGahee, but he does a good job. Just a shoestring tackle from that weak side linebacker spot. Brings up a third and eight for Miami. Just a two-yard gain. Let's see what Miami can do here. Dorsey pointing out where everybody is on defense. Miami one of five on third down conversions. Deep drop through the hands of Winslow, who had a little bit of running room, but he had a fast closing Brian Bender on him, and Miami's going to have to punt. Boy, this is the kind of game you talk about all the time in football. You let somebody hang around, you never know. Yeah, watch the level of the tight end. First, he starts about three yards down the field. Then he goes to about three yards as he's pushed in the middle of that defense. And Rutgers doing a lot of things defensively, running people from zone to zone and really frustrating this Miami pass offense. Capshaw on the punt. His first punt went 38 yards. All kinds of movement on the O-line for Miami. But a Miami club looking a little unsure of itself. That's a surprise. Yeah, very sluggish to start the football game. And now it looks like another five yards will be tacked on to this bad field position. Illegal snap by the offense. Five-yard penalty remains fourth down. Rutgers fans got to be saying, whatever you're doing, fellas, keep it going. Trailing only 8-7. A lot of penalties mounting for Larry Coker's ball club. Be Sean Seabrooks. 
Deep to receive the punt from Freddie Capshaw. And Dave, with the wind, it's still blowing pretty good. This should be a great field position if they can get a halfway decent return for Rutgers. It's not the Capshaw. Oh, he shot this one badly. Not as badly as the one at the Florida State game. The Rutgers will have fine field position at its own 48-yard line. That punt only 33 yards. Timeout on the field. Rutgers down a point here at home to number one Miami. Seven. Miami over Rutgers. Rutgers got on the board first. The Pittman one yard drive, capping an 80 yard run. 80 yard drive over 334. Took seven plays. And the Larry Coker's club has got the last three scores a 29 yard field goal by Seavers, a 24 yarder by Seavers, and then a safety. There was a bad snap, and Pittman threw it out of bounds. Saved his club five points. Rutgers taking over after 33 yard punt by Capshaw. And it's own 48. Throwback. Oh, it got broken up. Oh, they throw it back to one of the ineligible receivers. That's a good lucky play, but there's a penalty flag on that one. It goes to that's Tron Carswell. So they are emptying the bag of trick plays, a 14 yarder. And Greg Schiano arguing a big point on the sidelines for Rutgers. Throwback to a tackle eligible. Well, the would-be receiver came from the end of the line of scrimmage. Carswell, There's no flag. No That's exactly right. How about that, Carswell? I think they were going to try to call illegal lineman downfield. But actually, it was a lateral. The way it ended up, this is a throwback to number 51. He lined up at the at the last eligible receiver spot on the offensive line, and a nice catch by the big man. John He's 6'5", 300 pounds. The senior holding on to it going out of bounds is Tron. Good job. Hey, Tron got a little wiggle there, too. Gave him a little dip to Carswell. <laughs> I didn't want to say it. No, you got, no, you got to give him his props you on do. that one. You do. <laughs> that, was a, that was a big shake on the side. <laughs> Nothing little about that. Boy, oh, boy. First and 10 at the 38. L.J. Smith in motion. The delay. There's something there. Oh, man, that got closed up. There's a penalty flag coming in. Faison looked like he was going to just bust right through. Jamal Green shut it down quickly. Picked up two yards. It looked like he was going to get 20. The penalty flag is going to back Rutgers up. Holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. So a hold is going to bring it back for Rutgers. Right now we take a moment to thank our Big East corporate partner, Cooper Tire, proud to be the official tire of the Big East Conference. Cooper Tires, don't give up a thing. Bill Cubitt, the offensive coordinator, he and Greg Ciano. Let it rip. What do you got to lose? I, I think they've done a great job so far in this first half with 705 and counting to only be down one point and and doing a good job managing the game for the young quarterback Ryan Hart. Falls back at the 47 of Miami first and 19 empty backfield now. Hart decent protection throw short and go over the top is your flag. No sir DJ Williams coming over the top of the receiver. An unpopular call here at the Scataway, New Jersey. And I agree with the fans. I think that was a little bit of interference over the top. Maybe a second before the ball gets there is DJ Williams left of your screen. He's trying to go to the underneath route again. The tight end clears, trying to get the, the tail back underneath. Ooh. And DJ's all over the would be receiver, Marcus Faison. Take another look, top of your screen. A lot of contact, but right there, DJ with the left arm over the top of the of the running back that's definitely interference and a missed opportunity for Rutgers. Second down 19 at the 47 clock at 651 here in the second period Hart looks left throws left the entire time. Oh, balls up in the air. That was up for grabs. It would have been out of bounds anyway. Fast closing Sykes on that play for Miami. McIntosh got a piece of it. Dave, sometimes in, in a point in the game, you start protecting your quarterback too much. I like what they did in the beginning of the game. They used a little wiggle. They went over the top to Aaron Martin. At some time, you're going to have to stretch the football field because 
Miami's getting their defense, their pass defense is getting to a, a level now where they're not going back further than 10 or 15 yards. Great pressure by 94, William Joseph on the young quarterback, Ryan Hart. But you've got to take a shot down the field at some point. Right now, Rutgers going to take a timeout before this big third down. Today, they're third and seven on third down. Probably with that in mind, you make a very good point. Eight to seven, you're almost a six touchdown underdog. Let it rip. What do you have to lose? Well, Miami right now feeling very comfortable in their pass defense sure. because they don't have to defend the back 30, 40 yards of the football field right now. Right now, let's take a look at the Miller High Life cool facts of the game. And Larry Coker, he's in charge of the Miami ship since 83. It has been a fabulous program. Five national titles, a couple of Heisman winners, 34 All-Americans, and a whole bunch of folks in the NFL. Yeah, that's for sure. And it was right around that year, probably 82, 83, 84, they started keeping a lot of those homegrown uh, guys at the University of Miami. And last season, you know, Dave, what a pitcher this is in the Rose Bowl. Dominating performance by Miami back in January 3rd earlier this year. Ken Dorsey was in charge, almost 94,000. Andre Johnson shakes free. That's a no brainer there. He had two TD catches. He had seven catches for Buck 99. Miami had a 34 zip lead at the half. Then they get this interception as part of a, just a route over Nebraska. Here's Hart to throw. And Faison can't pull it in. Well, he had some defenders closing on him in a heartbeat. Roll was there along with Vilma. So I'm surprised they didn't take a shot downfield. Third and 19 to try a swing pass. Yeah, that time, uh, as you said, Roll and Vilma in perfect position. It was probably better off that the pass was incomplete. You could bring your punting unit in, but I agree with you. Maybe uh, right there, just throw it deep, and even if you get a pick, it's as good as a punt. And you've got the wind at your back. You've got to take some shots. Barr with a couple of 35-yard punts to his credit today. Trick play here. Low snap. Well, he did a good job. He got a nice punt. He directs it out of bounds. Let's see where they give him credit to. It's going to be definitely inside the 20. Not a bad job at the 15 yard line, given it was a two hopper. Mike must have a little shortstop in him. Did a good job. A 32 yard punt. Mike Barr with a bad snap. Gets his job done. He looks a little concerned, but he did a pretty good job. Balls at the 15 yard line when we come back, 6.35 to go in the second. Rutgers trailing Miami by a point. It's true, folks. 8 7, number one Miami leading here at Rutgers, 6 and 35 to go here in the second quarter. And Ryan Hart, welcome to your first <laughs> collegiate start, young fella. No one said it was going to be easy for the young quarterback. William Joseph and Cornelius Green and the rest of that defensive front for Miami has made it difficult on the young quarterback. But to his credit, he did a great job coming out of that first series. And there you see both quarterbacks, the Hart on the left and Ted Trump on the right, the senior. He looks like Ted Trump may be coming into the game. And Coach Ciano said yesterday when we were talking with him, Dave, he was going to use both quarterbacks. And it might be time to bring the veteran in right now. First and 10 from the 15, McGahee. Powers it up to about the 21, picks up six. So check out the Ameritrade out of town scores. Other action in the Big East Conference. Wow. Down the road, the Mountaineers making. Boy, I tell you what, they're doing some damage here. They're two and one in the Big East Conference. Wisconsin has come back to tie Iowa at three apiece. Michigan still handling state right now. Second down and four. 21 yard line. McGahee, seven carries, 88 yards. Dorsey looked for two or three people. Now he just throws it away. He was looking to his left and he wasn't outside the tackle box. And Dennis Hennigan, the referee, flags him. Also, there was nobody in the intended receivers. Everybody had run long on the near side. Let's see. Well, they're going to argue the point that 87, Eric Winston was down there. Intentional grounding. Going to back him up. Winston was about the 40-yard line. That ball went out of bounds about the 20. Yeah, the problem was the backup tight end kept going down the football field, running away from the uh, the pass. Intentional grounding on the offense. Penalty is lost and down at the spot of the pass. Third down. So third down. 
can't really see Winston, but he would have been extreme right to your on your screen. And yeah, it Third looked like 19 down at the six. Miami was trying to set up that screen pass, and Wills McGahee fell down with a lot of traffic. And in this situation against Boston College and Florida State, they ran the screen play to the short side of the field for big plays, did Miami. If you're Rutgers, you'd love a pick right now. Quick drop by Dorsey. Hangs, fires over the middle. There's one broken up. Winslow had his hands on it, broken up at the 27 yard line. Nice job by Jason Grant, number 27. And Rutgers has forced the punt. Well, four red jerseys in the middle of the field for Rutgers, and now the crowd getting back into the football game. Dorsey in his end zone, trying to fit it into a very small window, and actually almost came away with the catch, did Kellen Winslow. But a good break on the ball. Also, Jarvis Johnson, the strong safety back there for Rutgers. Hepshaw nine yards deep, takes his time, gets it high, short. Out of bounds, 32-yard line. How about Rutgers? They're going to have wonderful field position at the 30-yard line. As Capshaw's gotten off two terrible punts, his last two efforts, that one a 24-yarder, the one before that for 33. You called it, Dave Capshaw. And against a very stiff win that's been picking up, great pressure on the special teams for Rutgers right up the middle. Looked like it would be blocked. But Capshaw did get it off. Looked like 33 coming right up the middle. Jason Nugent on the special teams. There's a, a classic case of the wind going against the punting team as well. You can see that big flag blowing around. Other scores, Iowa 10-3 in the Big Ten. But right now, this could be a big development here. 5.41 to go. And Hart, uh, Trump is in there now. Straight up the gut. Pittman for about two. Not, well, not a lot doing there. Those holes close so fast. It's incredible. It's believe. You're right. And, and for Rutgers right now, they're doing exactly what they wanted to do. You see Ted Trump uh, coming into the football game this senior. But Greg Schiano said to us yesterday, we want to get through the first quarter, hang around, you know, be close. Second quarter, now you see 517 left to go. We just want to hang around. They're going to do more than hang around if they can punch something in and get on the scoreboard right here. Sean Tucker. Top of your screen, Martin at the bottom, LJ Smith in the slot to the top. Long count by Trump, rollout, got time, got the receivers down, the throw back, he's got Martin. Martin's there, oh, baby, did he get hit? Wow, Sean Taylor lit him up. Aaron gets up, but Sean Taylor had a free one, and boy, did he punch that toll ticket. He sure did, Sean Taylor. Comes from the backside. It looks like Trump needs to get rid of this football. He needs to make a decision because the longer he hangs on to it, the more speed, team speed, Miami can close that gap. He looks open, does his wide receiver down the field, Martin, but he's running right into coverage, and that coverage in the presence of number 26, Sean Taylor. That's nine breakups on the season for 26, the sophomore out of Miami. Had to go with an interception already today for Taylor, which was a big one. Went for 49 yards, third down play. Trump throws, nice catch, 21 yard line, two yards shy though for first down. That catch by Sean Tucker. And one catch for eight yards last year, last week rather, against West Virginia. First catch of the day. Looks like the field goal unit's gonna come on for Rutgers. That was an excellent uh, throw by Ted Trump to the outside. Tucker came into the game with 13 catches, make it 14, but an excellent throw by Ted Trump coming in cold off the bench. Ryan Sands, three of seven on the season, a 45-yarder, his long, that's against Army, did have one block, this from 38 yards on the right hash. Good operation on the snap. Here's the kick. It's a low liner, and he knocked it through. How about that? Rutgers regains the lead. Yes, you heard right. Regains the lead against Miami. They open up 7-0. Trail 8-7. Now it's 10-8 in favor of the Rutgers Scarlet Knights and a 38-yard field goal by Ryan Sands. That'll make him 4-8 of eight on the season. And Rutgers catches in on a bad punt by Capshaw. Good, good play on third down. They got in position for them to cash in with the field goal, so they did a nice job on those set of downs. You can see Rutgers, the excitement, just kicking the field goal and getting back to the lead to 10 to 8. Just a good job by them creating that excitement with their offense and defense. Yes, indeed. Let's check in with Greg Roberts. 
Well, Dave, we could be a part of history today in more ways than one, but I do know for the first time ever, this game is available in live real-time webcast over the internet. You can find us on ESPN.com. This webcast is offered to ESPN Insider subscribers only. Remember, you must have a cable modem or other broadband connections in order to view today's game between the Scarlet Knights and the Miami Hurricanes. For a link, go to BigEast.org forward slash airwaves. Dave, we're a part of history. How about that? Not too bad, I tell you. We've lived to see a lot of things. <laughs> Yet another That's right. One. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Bad punt, of course, set up the erected Scarlet Knights and went for just 24 yards as Mike Cortese gets ready to kick it off for the Scarlet Knights. There will be a lot of folks going crazy when they see this score as Cortese knocks it through. Gathers and Peyton looked at each other. You want it? No, I don't. And how about this? A penalty flag back in front of the Miami at the Rutgers bench. Guess a couple of gunners got knocked out of bounds. Looked like Nathan Jones was involved. But a flag way upfield. Yeah, Leon Williams, 44 and 58. Gerald Weaver from Miami may get flagged with a personal foul penalty on that special teams from Miami. After the play was over, personal foul on Miami. Penalty is half right, the distance to the goal. First down. These are the kind of games that coaches say, hey, you know what? These things can happen. Glad you could join us for Big East football. Number one Miami being put to the test, yes, by Rutgers. Rutgers leading 10 to 8 here with four minutes exactly left here in the second quarter. Dave Sims with John Kinjemi and Greg Roberts. Four minutes to go. Miami backed up. Ball at the Miami 10. Here's McGahee. Well, he got that back in a hurry, didn't he? 12-yard pickup first down. Another flag. Tackle on the play by Jarvis Johnson. Sophomore from Miami, 13 yards on the pickup. Holding against Miami. Boy, a lot of things going wrong for Larry Coker's Hurricanes. We talked about the Hurricanes coming into the game, leading the Big East in penalty yards. They're adding on to Holding it today. On the offense, penalty is half the distance to the goal. Repeat first down. Wow, half the distance to the goal. Now put it back at the seven yard line. Although it was brought back, Dave, did you see red jerseys going in to make the tackle and then bouncing off of Wilson? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Nine penalties, 66 yards. Play fake. Dorsey going for the big play. Overthrows his receiver. That's Andre Johnson, Brandon Hall covering for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. 3.38 to go here in the second. Look at the storyline. Ken Dorsey, the Heisman Trophy candidate. No touchdowns on the board yet. McGahee's popped the big run, but still under 100 yards right now. Ryan Hart started. He's from the Miami area. Six for 12. He's been relieved. We'll probably see him back. And Rutgers has led twice. And full of excitement right now, too. Second and 13. Rutgers defense very excited. Trying to stretch the play. Left side, McGahee. And they swarm him. Can you believe it? Maybe a gain of a yard. Alfred Peterson, number 92 there with Johnson's help. Bring up a third and long, third and 12 at the eight. We talked about Miami's team speed on defense. This time, the Scarlet Knights really rallying to the football. You see two, three, four red helmets and red jerseys around the football carrier, Willis McGahee. So now a third and 12 inside the 10 yard line around the eight yard line. Rutgers can get instant field position again if they can come up and stop Miami today. One of seven on third down. It's three first downs in the quarter. For Miami. Here's Dorsey to throw. Hangs and hits Winslow. Bobbles. He'll be short. Part at the 17 yard line. That's a nine yard pickup. Nathan Jones with the big play. Yeah, let a team hang around, folks. You see what can happen. Rutgers starting to believe now. They're fired up. We know Miami comes into this game, and you might hear it around the country, they have nothing to gain and everything to lose because even if they win this football game, that BCS, you know, with Notre Dame having a, a better opponent, uh, they're coming in with a little bit of a hangover, it looks like. They have nobody back. They're going to go.
If it was possible for the field goals to come down at halftime, they might do it here at Rutgers. The poster's still up, but Rutgers has the lead 16 to 8. Fourth special teams touchdown of the season for Rutgers. We mentioned the two 100-yard kick returns by Nathan Jones. That time, Sean Seabrooks comes in with the, the touchdown on special teams. Third time Miami's had a punt block. Point after good, not a great snap, but it's handled and not through. We've got a developing story, boys and girls. <laughs> 2 17 to go in the second. It's Rutgers leading number one, Miami, 17 to 8. Well, Dave, as you said, nobody back and just the uh, up the middle. Sean Seabrooks does a terrific job getting the football. 33 blocked it. It looked like 33. Nugent. Exactly. Nugent did a great job on special teams earlier in the game. The right hand gets the block, and Seabrooks comes in for the score. The fourth special teams touchdown of the year. And it's been a miserable afternoon for special teams over Miami. First the penalties, now the block kick of Capshaw. 17 to 8 with 217 left to go before halftime. Glad this game's being televised because if it wasn't, it'd be hard to believe. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> you, couldn't, you couldn't tell the story. Great job up the middle by Rutgers and Miami. There was three or four people that could have been in position to pick up that fumble. The floodgates were wide open, and now Rutgers on top 17 to 8, full of momentum in the crowd into it. Stunned like everybody else. Seabrooks. Ran that in, short yardage. Nugent with the block. Larry Coker seen three punt blocks against his club this year. My, oh my, oh my. I believe that was at uh, Giant Stadium. They knocked off Joe Paterno and Penn State. I'll tell you what, as big as that one. Was if this they would pull it off this today, would be a hundred times bigger, a lot bigger. Gethers inside the five at the three. He's got some money room. 20, 25. What a collision! Loose ball. It's recovered by Miami. Terry Bynes in there on the hit. Weaver with the recovery. Saving Miami hide right there. Wow, big time. Weaver, number 58, was called for the personal foul on the last special teams play. Gets on the fumble, but what a collision around the third 25-yard line. Boy, he took as much as he <laughs> as he gave on that one. Let's listen to this one, Dave. That's helmet on helmet, and Miami very lucky to get the football back. His helmet got knocked yeah. off. Yeah. Well, Rutgers has Miami's attention to be sure. Balls at the 27 yard line. They give it to McGee. Cutting back. This is what he does so well. Jones has speed. Does he have enough? McGee, 40, and dragged down at the 30. First down, Miami. Making big play it in a heartbeat. McGee with a 43 yard run. Miami will go into a makeshift hurry up offense, but it could have been one of the best downfield blocks I've seen. Number five, Andre Johnson springs his tailback. Willis McGahey right there. Could have been a, a block in the back or a push in the back, but great job down the Rutgers sideline is Willis McGahey. Had a big run earlier in the game. That's his second of the day. Nine for 132. Dorsey trying to get it back. Got all day. Throws balls to McGahey. Makes the catch and then swarmed under. About a three yard pickup. Gary Brackett there for the tackle. This is how Miami gets into the game. Their drives don't last. Their average drive is under two minutes. They love to score quick, and Miami needs to score before halftime. Second and seven, balls at the 27. Delay, run right side. McGay, he breaks a couple of tackles. Maybe about a yard short of a first down. He advances it to the 21-yard line. Brackett again picks up six. Timeout called by Miami. Let's check in with Greg Roberts. Dave, I just want to remind everyone to stick around for the Discover Card Halftime Report. We'll take a look at our Big East Wire. We'll check scores from around the nation, and then we'll throw it back to you and John for a first-half analysis, highlights, and stats. And it's been a pretty good first half if you're a Rutgers fan. It's all coming up on the Discover Card Halftime Report. Greg, thank you very much. And stunning would be just one of a couple of dozen adjectives you'd use to describe this one with a buck 13 to go first half. 17-9 Rutgers. And it has been a long time since Miami suffered a loss. As we mentioned, Kenny Dorsey's 33 and 1 as a starter. We have to take you back a couple of years ago, September 9 at Washington. This was early on at the season. 
And Alexis with the touchdown run right here, and Washington goes on to a 34-29 win. And Miami has won 29 in a row since then. 29 game streak they're on right now. Tying the mark back early in the 90s. Right now, a third down and one at the 21. So Ken Dorsey, Dan Werner, yeah, talking Dan with Werner. his quarterback coach on the sidelines. Third and one, Miami has not been real done well on third down. One for eight on third down, and they desperately need to keep this drive alive. Dorsey, eight for 16, 81 yards. McGahee, nine for 132. McGahee gets the call right side, breaks three tackles, dives ahead. First down, Miami. Inside the 15 at the 14 yard line, gain of seven. You see why if you can stop Miami throwing the football they can turn back to number two and get that running game churning. What a terrific run. They've got an overload top of your screen with Beard, Johnson and Sands. They look that way. Throw underneath McGay. He had it and lost it at the 10. Pretty good coverage by Gary Brackett. What an assignment that is for the walk on who sent her to scholarship. One of the track captains for Rutgers. Yeah they clear everybody out trips to the top side. They run everybody deep and try to bring Willis McGahey underneath came into the game with 14 catches for 288 yards. There you see his stats today 11 for 145 on the ground and two for 14 on the air. Sands and Beard go top of your screen left the tight end on that side is Dorsey drops into is uh, Winslow beg your pardon Dorsey drops into a shotgun second and ten at the 14 sun breaking through Dorsey's got running room got running room he's at the 10 he's at the five and steps out of bounds at the three he's got a first and goal for Miami so a gain of 11 run out of bounds by Raheem Moore. Yeah, Ken Dorsey doesn't tuck it that often and run, but that time he had no choice and it was the best decision at his disposal. Everybody into the end zone, Ken says, you know what, I think I can get to first down and a little bit more. Does a nice job of just tiptoeing down the sidelines, close to the five yard line, right at the five yard line is Miami. So it leaves him third and short. So third and one at the five with 49 seconds to go. Miami trailing, yes, Miami trailing here at Rutgers 17 to 8. And two of nine on third down, Dave, as you see Ken Dorsey's stats on the day. Dorsey looks right, throws. Intercepted, Tommy Fry to the play. It's Jones. Jones going to try to take it to the house. He's going to go. Will it count? Does the matter or does it count? Jones takes it all the way in for the touchdown. Can you imagine? Wow, what a play. If this goes against Rutgers, and it looks like it will. Boy, oh boy, that would have been 24 to 8 at the half. Once Jones got it, there was no way Brett Romberg or Dorsey were going to get him, and it's a hold against Rutgers. And you know what, John, uh, John we talked about this before the game. Rutgers has got to avoid that kind of a big play which gets taken back. And it's the same penalty. thing that happened at Tennessee. There was 12 calls in that game. Coach Giano said seven of, seven of those 12 were game breakers. And this one really is a game breaker. Prior to the interception, holding on the defense. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. It looked like Nathan Jones and the wideout were, were hand fighting down at the bottom of the screen. I don't know if we can see this early enough, but there was some contact between Jones and number seven, Ethnic Sands, but it would have been a touchdown Rutgers. I don't think that, that there was that much contact that it warranted a penalty. I was looking at the matchup down below. I don't think we'll get to see it here either. It's just outside on the wideout, but uh, it was called regardless. It's going to be first and goal for Miami. That was uh, a hundred yard return. That was nullified by a hold and a timeout called. I believe it's by Rutgers. It is by Rutgers. I want to make sure they got everything in order. 37 seconds to go. It's going to be a huge turning point in the game. Miami, they're able to punch it in. Going to go to the halftime if they just kick the extra point only down two. I mean, that's a 14-point swing. It's unbelievable. We we talked about that yesterday with Coach Ciano. They thought they had a chance to beat Tennessee down at Tennessee, and the penalties, really, the penalties that weren't called 
uh, that went Tennessee's favor, really helped them get the lead and win the football game. And here, as you said, it would have been a two, you know, 14 points. Just a huge turnaround with 37 seconds left to go before halftime. That's why we play the games, you just <laughs> never know. And speaking of uh, playing more games, next week, check out this. Temple, Pittsburgh, or BC, West Virginia. Noontime start next Saturday. Check the local listings for the game in your area. Noontime start next week. So Seabrooks recovers a block punt for touchdown. Blocked by Nugent. 17-8 Rutgers. Miami strikes back so quickly. First play from scrimmage after a nice kick return. A 43-yard McGahee run. Jones has a 100-yard interception return. Wiped out by a hold. So now here's Miami. First and goal. At the two. Trailing 17-8 with 37 seconds to go. They spread him with two top of the screen. They run left side. McGee, he walks in untouched. Touchdown, Miami. So McGee, he gets the first touchdown for the Canes today. For McGee, he, his 15th rushing score of the season. It's 17 14. And Miami, very fortunate to be, uh, to have a chance to only go down two points going into halftime. Seavers out of the catch draw hold has it blocked. How about this? Point after touchdown is blocked. That's the first first time that's been blocked this year on a PAT. Nathan Jones got it. Nathan Jones having an all-conference day. 17-14 Rutgers. Well, Ruck Rutgers is doing in every facet of the game right now. Special teams look like 95 for Rutgers up in the middle of, the, of that play. Gary Gibson, the defensive lineman, gets his left hand on it to block it. But on the touchdown run, Willis McGahee was untouched, but they do a good job blocking the extra point to keep it at a three-point game. But off left tackle, just a, a great block on the outside, 77. Chris Myers, the right guard coming around, and no one touches Willis McGahee. He gets his... 15th rushing touchdown of the season. Hands the ball to the official, and it's a, a three-point Rutgers lead, but would have what could have been for this Rutgers oh, defense. Could have been 24 to 8. 33 seconds to go here in the second quarter. The Rutgers still in the lead. 33 seconds to go. Almost a six touchdown favorite is Miami coming into this game and special teams played a role in some of the things happening today. McGahee with the big run, 43 yards. Big highlight in that drive. Coming short, fair catch made, 22 yard line with 31 seconds to go. That's a good play by Cedric Brown with that wind and Miami coming down. That's a good play to fair catch the uh, the kickoff there. Very sound, save some time and hey, watch out to be a be a hero. Get the secure the ball. Don't let Miami get the freebie there, right? Exactly right. And I would think you'd come out and just kneel on it and head to the house with a, a three point lead right here. Want to go in with some momentum and Greg Schiano said hey I want to hang close in the first quarter hang close at halftime and, and go in with a lead. Why not. And that's how you build a program Miami won the toss deferred so Miami's going to get the ball when we come back. Ted Trump takes him there takes a hit. No harm no foul. I'll bring up second down. Well, if I'm the quarterback right now, Ted Trump, I take my troops, I run to the house, get a little warm at halftime, and try to come out with the same momentum and same attitude in the third quarter. That's why we play the games, folks. 17 to 14. Rutgers a huge underdog today. Pick up 10 points in the second quarter. Last lead against the right team earlier this year against Tennessee. 17 14. One of the things you know, the Rutgers folks are saying, oh, what could have been had the Jones pick for 100? Had it stood. But a lot of good moments by the Rutgers Scarlet Knights here at halftime. 17 14 after the first 30 minutes of play in what is a big story in college football.
Three-point Rutgers lead. Here's Greg Schiano with Greg Roberts. Coach, you're toe-to-toe -to -toe with the number one team in the country. Your thoughts? Two quarters to play. we got to play the same way. You've said one quarter at a time. You've alternated quarterbacks here. What's going to happen in the second half? Ryan Hart will start, and we'll go one play at a time. Thank you, sir. Good luck to you, Greg. Back to you, Dave. Greg, thank you very much, and thank you, Greg, as well. And <laughs> thank you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Make a ball. What a game. This first half has been terrific. And you see the turnaround against Miami. Rutgers last year to this year, passing yards a little bit better at 100 compared to 62. And you know, the turnovers is, is the biggest point. Six turnovers last year, only one today. And then the points, 17 points today. They had goose eggs last year. And Rutgers in this football game leading 17 to 14 starting this third quarter. What would you imagine Larry Coker had to say to his crew? Well, I think it's one of those things where you guys were sleepwalking. We're walking through this and we're not doing we're not playing the way we need to take care of yourself first don't worry about what Rutgers is doing and you see the quarterback comparison I thought Ken Dorsey was going to have a big day especially with his tight end and with his main receiver on the outside Andre Johnson and on the comparison you see Hart 50 percent 93 yards only one interception they haven't turned it over like they did last year and that's why they're still in the game but Larry Coker I think he has to take care of what he can control and that's Miami on offense Miami on defense and especially Miami on special teams you mentioned Kellen Winslow, the tight end, three catches, 41 yards, a long of 24. He's the leading receiver today. Marcus Faison, three catches for 39 yards. And how about McGahee on the ground? That's unbelievable. 12 for a buck 47, a touchdown, a long of 68, an average of 12.2 per pop. There's no way, Dave, you can tell me, <laughs> looking at these stats, if Willis McGahee goes 12 for 147 and a touchdown, a long of 68, he averages 12 yards a carry. Miami's down by three points. Yeah. Go figure that, right? There's Jason Gathers deep to receive. The kickoff from Michael Cortez out of Jackson, New Jersey. 17 14. Rutgers over Miami. Second half underway. Pretty good kick. Two yards deep. Gathers. 15 20. Good head of steam. 25 30. Got a good wall. Penalty flag's going to bring probably bring it back. Penalty flag at about the 38 yard line brought down by the kicker. That's a return of 44 yards. Ortiz with the tackle. Miami has had a whole bunch of penalties, and a lot of them have been, I didn't say drive killers, but they haven't helped. Holding during the return. And yet another penalty against Miami. That's 10, Dave. 10. You know, in Virginia Tech has set the standard on special teams in the Big East, but Miami hasn't been that far behind. So far, in the last three or four weeks, Miami has done a poor job on special teams, but you see number three right there, Jason Gathers. Nobody touches him until about the 35-40 yard line, so he's, he's done a good job getting it down. It's the guys in front of him causing uh, the penalties, bringing Miami back. From the 28, where Miami's going to start here, and McGahee. Turning right in, and he's met there by Gary Brackett, number 41. That's help from Raheem Moore, number one. Got it across the 30 to the 31 yard line, picks up three. We see Rutgers, the first ever lead against the number one team at half. This is the fourth game and versus number one all time. So Rutgers doing an excellent job in the first half. Now you're going to see what kind of team they have coming out in the second half. Can they hang on? They had Tennessee on the ropes on the road. They didn't do it. Now they're at home. They've got that home crowd behind them. Second and seven for Miami. First time ever number one has been on campus here at Rutgers. Here's Dorsey. Deep drop. Throw. What a catch. Wow. 50 yard line. That'll work. Andre Johnson. On the bobble, first down Miami. Coverage by Sean Seabrooks. Wow. <laughs> what a catch, Dave. Watch the concentration. Number five, the junior from Miami, Florida. You know, you'd love your wide receiver just to catch it once, but he catches it twice. Just great concentration and what strength. That takes great strength and concentration to get on your back, catch the football into your body. Watch the fingertip catch right there. What a catch. The arching of the back by number five, Andre Johnson. That's his first catch of the day. Those neck bridges work. Slant pattern, poorly thrown and it's a break for Miami that it was because the defender had inside position on Johnson that was Homan covering for Rutgers. Well that's the same play that Ha had his interception on Johnson the quick slant to the outside and it seems like Ken Dorsey and Johnson on that slant need to get together right now on different uh, wavelengths for the quick slant. What about Johnson the neck bridge that is helped he obviously has a strong stomach 
have done a lot yeah. of ab work to do to make a He's play. He's a like great that. athlete. No doubt about it. Catches it off his face mask. Second and ten at the 50. Good time. Whoa, throwing. Yeah. Thrown. Winslow was dragging along the line of scrimmage. He's claiming he was being held by Gary Brackett. Well, the problem was Gary Brackett gave him a little two-hand shiver going across the middle of the football field that threw him off. Watch right to left, right there. Bang, he gets hit right as Dorsey's ready to throw it. It knocks him from five yards down the field to about two yards down the field. He did this in the first half. Dorsey had trouble finding his tight end. He just knocks him, just lowers his shoulder and blocks him into the line of scrimmage. Dorsey, nine of 20, 100 yards and one interception on fourth down today. Miami just two of six. Ball right at midfield. Third and ten. Deep drop underneath and it's going to be short of a first down. Ethnic Sands brought down quickly. Nathan Jones on the play. He's been a big play guy all season. Four records. Yeah, on special teams, he's done a terrific job. Now he comes up on third down. Miami came in two of nine in this football game. Now they're two of ten on third down. Seabrooks deep to receive the punt for Cap from Capstraw. He has not had a better day. He's had one block. You see his average is under 24 pop. Boy, Raheem Moore made a good challenge after that one. Seabrooks oh, makes the ball and catches and takes it out of bounds at the eight yard line. Inside the 10, he might have been better served just leaving, leaving it alone, although Miami did have pretty good coverage. Capstraw has Best punt of the day, 38 yards on that effort. Here's the young quarterback, Ryan Hart, going to lead his team in the second half. Let's take a look back at this Rutgers offense and see in the first half, Hart to Martin for 40 yards, a big play on that first drive. Here we see him checking it down to Marcus Faison and then doing a nice job getting it outside to his tight end. So he's hit everybody in the first half. Have to have another good half starting this third quarter. First and ten at the seven. Boy, that was well covered. Pittman on the carry and no room there, says William Joseph. Good, good job for the senior. 6'5, 297. And Dave, we talked about this yesterday, bringing Maurice Sykes down on first down to try to help that run. And Ryan Hart's going to have to find. Uh, some running room for this offensive line to win the line of scrimmage because right now at 50 percent only one turnover 93 yards it's going to be thrust on his shoulders to move the chains on second and third down if they can't run it on first second and nine at the eight that one loses as William Joseph again makes the tackle so that front four for Miami really showing itself and again they go eight deep on that D line. It looks like the defensive line got the message at halftime from Larry Coker. They come out with a vengeance 94 William Joseph on first and second down right in the mix to stop Marcus Faison. Lost a yard on that play third down and 10 at the seven yard line. Now in this situation in the first half they hit the under to the tailback. Ryan Hart the quarterback play fake. He's in trouble. Got rid of it. It's caught by an offensive lineman. Penalty flag on that. That'll be a legal receiver. That was Marty Pismuka. Surprise Hart didn't get rid of it quicker. He was in the end zone. That's quite possibly going to be a safety. It looked like he deliberately threw it. It wasn't oh, banged wasn't out. Absolutely. It wasn't hit out by a defensive arm. Legal touch by the offense. So they had the third and ten at the seven. That's an easy call. You decline that fourth down, make them punt. You would think so. You would think you would decline it, bring on the punting unit. Great stand of set of downs there by Miami's defense. Illegal touching on the offense. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. Miami's going to get the ball in pretty good shape. Yeah, let's take a look at this play. You see Ryan Hart in the end zone. He did not want the football. And I'm not sure who looks like Pismuka gets the football. Yep. Tucks it under and tries to get out by the 10 yard line. But Ryan Hart was under duress. Right they there. were coming in from, from all angles. Yeah. 95 and 94 respectively. McDougal and Joseph. Bars average 34 yards on three punts. Ryan Neal's the normal snapper. He's out injured. And Barr, oh, baby, he turned this one over. 
He backs Sands all the way back to the 38 yard line. And the coverage. Good move by Sands, and he's all the way back to the 29 yard line. Good job by Rutgers. The first man down there was Jason Nugent. Chris Loomis was there as well. 54 yards on the punt. Mike Barr, terrific job from his own end zone. They needed just an effort like this, and how about the determination by the Rutgers coverage team? I always get the ball when we return. Rutgers continues to lead number one Miami by three early on here in the third as we check in on Heisman history brought to you by the exciting lineup of Suzuki products all proud presenting sponsors of the Heisman trophy. Downtown Athletic Club is where it originated back in 35 named after a longtime coach John W. Heisman coached many places during his tenure. 40 running backs 21 quarterbacks dominate the 60 the list of 67 winners. And right now that trophy is up for grabs. Dorsey to throw after the play fake. Deep down the middle and he overthrows his tight end Kellen Winslow who had beaten double coverage. He had a step and a half. Great pressure up front by Pismuka 99. Had a step did uh, the tight end Kellen Winslow but watch the, the pressure right there. Dorsey going to the ground and he doesn't go to the ground much. This offensive line protects him very, very well over his career. That's why he's had such terrific statistics. Greg Prismuka with that tackle. They run McGee, he left side, breaks through the first wave. Can't get through the second McGee wave. The but a pretty decent gain across the 35 to the 36 yard line. Picks up six. Third down and four. Well, Willis McGee, he had an awesome, awesome first half. 12 carries for 147 yards, and you see him continue to on that uh, on the rushing of his legs, moving the pile closer to the first down, closer to the 40-yard line of Miami to bring up a third and four. And this Rutgers defense is going to have to make a stand on third down. There you see Miami only two of ten on third down. Rutgers trying to find a way to make that two of 11. Neither team has found a groove at third down. Hill goes in motion. Dorsey coming this way with McGahee in front of him. Throws and a nice catch by Johnson. Good for four. He cut it out of bounds at the 43 yard line. That would have been plenty for first down. It was covered by Brandon Hall. Boy, there's a mistake. Well, it looked like Dorsey was trying to get the football down the field to number nine, Kevin Beard. And as he held on to it, it looked like Johnson continued to the sideline, which led him closer to being out of bounds. That looked like a good catch. That right foot looked like inbounds. If we can take another look right there, I don't think his toe got to the to the end line. That looked like a, a good catch and a first down. Capshaw gets a beauty. Drives Seabrooks inside the 20. Bounce there. Penalty flags two of them as Seabrooks keeps his feet to the 18, but Rutgers should come out of that with another few yards after the penalty is walked off. That punt carries 45 yards. And another error on special teams for Miami. In that regard, that particular area, it has been a very sloppy game for the number one team in the country. Dennis Hennigan, the referee. Interferes with the opportunity to catch the kick on the kicking team. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. You got that two yard window that you have to allow the returner. It looked like 26. The defensive back, Sean Taylor, on special teams, gets into Seabrooks. And that'll cost them more yardage on, on the penalty yardage in Miami. This is the most lackluster performance I've seen for the number one team in the last five or six years with Miami regarding all three phases of the game. They just can't get it going. 11 penalties, 87 yards for the Canes. Rutgers starting at its own 31. At what point do you see Miami, not Miami, but uh, Rutgers, Take a deep shot. They haven't really done anything in any deep posts or deep corners to this point. They haven't tried to stretch the field, and you'd like to see them take a shot with good field position, especially with the wind at their back as it is now. Actually, I bet take, take that back. They had the 40 yarder to Martin. Here's a throw and a catch. Sean Tucker, the freshman from Parkland, Florida. They beat the coverage of Antrell Roll. Gains only of about four yards, though. Excellent concentration by Sean Tucker. This was not an easy catch. You see the ball gets up and, and outside, but a good positioning of the, of the football 
by the quarterback Hart, but Sean Tucker goes up the ladder and gets the catch for Rutgers on first down. Bring up seven and second and six. But as you said, they haven't gone deep since the first series. You bet. Two catches, 11 yards for Tucker. Martin at the top of your screen. Direct snap went right to the fullback last time, and that's what they do here. Miami's seen that. They absolutely destroyed that play for a loss of a yard. Vilma's there on the tackle. No element of surprise there. Sets up a third down at seven. Back him up to the 34-yard line. We check out some Ameritrade out-of-town scores. And West Virginia just pouring it on. They had a 40-nothing win here at Rutgers a few weeks ago. Iowa pulling away from Wisconsin, which is staring at its fourth loss. Wow. Michigan in no trouble. Not much of a sweat against State. Another in-state battle there in Kansas, 7 0. In favor of the Wildcats. Third and seven, 34-yard line for Rutgers. Hangs and throws over the middle. And uh, good coverage by Roll on the intended receiver. That's Josh Hobbs, the 6'3 senior from Somerville, New Jersey. Brings up a fourth and seven as Bowling Green tries to remain unbeaten. Iowa State leading in the Big 12 by nine. Well, Miami's defense has done a terrific job coming out in the first six plays of this second half, shutting down Rutgers offensively. 38-8 is what Barr's averaging on four prior punts. It's another beauty. Another beauty. And it goes out of bounds. Let's see where they mark it. 20. Wow. 29 yard line would have thought it was a little bit farther back, but not a bad job. By Barr. 8.36 to go in the third after that 35 yard punt. Greg Shannon's club still with a three point lead. Temperature dropping here, Piscataway, New Jersey. Glad you could join us for Big East football. Number one Miami trailing here at Rutgers by three. I'm Dave Sims with John Kinjemi and Greg Roberts. No scoring so far here in the third period. 8.36 to go. And you think uh, the Miami players <laughs> just a little bit out of their element. They're just a touch, <laughs> touch north of South Florida. Dorsey on the draw, McGahee gets it to the 34-yard line, picks up four, and he's brought down by Will Burnett. Well, Willis McGahee has been the workhorse. He goes over 1,000 yards, the Miami running back does, and he did it in early and often on this 68-yard run. He breaks the tackle at the line of scrimmage. Now it's a foot race. He, as I said, he goes 68 yards until Nathan Jones brings him down. Just before halftime, he goes in inside the five-yard line untouched. He has 157 yards on the day. Picks up about two more there. Good defensive stop. Boy, bodies flying all over, but Miami is seeing a pretty good defensive effort by this Rutgers ball club. Rutgers on rushing defenses last in the conference and 95th in the country. And they're doing a good job today, even though Willis McGahee's having a big day. There you see his season yards at 1,010 yards and 15 touchdowns. But doing a good job, especially on third down. Miami only two conversions out of 10, I believe, on third down. Two of 11 now. Two of 11 going into this one. Dorsey got a lot of time and now flush. He's in trouble, gets away, throws. In and out of hands of Johnson almost picked on the tip. Jarvis Johnson had an opportunity. Three and out for Miami. And Dorsey gets up slow after the hit by Brackett, 41. He's going to the sideline, checking his left hand. He did a great job of keeping the play alive, but number one, Raheem Orr getting past the block of Willis McGahee. Now you see the escapability of the quarterback trying to go over the middle, then almost picked off by Johnson. Capshaw gets a beauty, hangs it up. Seabrooks watches it go out of bounds inside the 30. 28 yard lines where Rutgers will start. That punt covers 36 yards. Let's take a look at Ken Dorsey eluding or again number one, but at the end of this play on the tackle by Brackett, his left hand looked like he got a helmet right on the left hand and, and it would be picked by Jarvis Johnson, but he did go to the sidelines holding that left hand. And for Miami fans, you want to have a healthy Ken Dorsey because he's your trigger guy. And on the other sideline, you'll see Hart come out and try to make the offense move for Rutgers with 7.15 left to go, and Rutgers still holding on to a three-point lead. Tell you what, we've had four possessions. The last four possessions have been uh, three and outs by both teams. Faison, ducking and diving, gets across the 30. Call it about the 32-yard line. 
picks up three. Well, Rocky McIntosh, number 50, he's been known to lay some lumber inside. Came into the game with 19 total tackles. He's only a red shirt freshman I out like of Gaffney, him. South Carolina. He can run like all the Miami defenders, but he can bring a, a punch to the tackle as well. I like him a lot. Ball's at the 32 yard line. Last score in the game we had with 33 seconds to go. Second quarter, McGahee a two yard run. The PAT was blocked. 17 14, that's where we are. Pilch, first carry of the season. Great effort. Close to first down yardage. I mean, real close. He had to get to the 39. Brought down by Vince Wolford. Well, he made his first carry a very good one, did number 47, Ray Pilch, the junior out of Piscataway. Watch him carry Miami defenders. He initially gets hit about three yards down the line by McIntosh, breaks that tackle, carries Roland Wilfork for another three or four yards, and will have to bring the sticks out to see if he indeed gets the first down. Pilch done some good work, converted linebacker, played on special teams last year. He's a couple links shy. Maybe a link shot. So third down play. They bring in some of the big heavies up front. Bring Rich McManus in. Look at all the big people they're going to have on the line here. And they go power eye formation. And he got good surge. He might have got some. Additional help from somebody coming <laughs> yeah, from behind I think there. So but too. Ryan Hart picks up the first down. So that breaks a succession of four three and outs. Yeah, four three and outs, two apiece. Rutgers first downs. Let's see, both teams at seven a pop. I think if you're going to take a shot, it's right now. You get your first down. Absolutely. You bring somebody outside. You either get to Tucker or Aaron Martin. Let it fly, especially to the short side of the field right here. Get somebody down the seam and somebody down the sideline. From the 40, they go empty backfield. Miami rushes four. Brian Park short drive throws underneath. And that's good for a first down. That's the backup tight end, Chris Loomis, out of Maple Shade, New Jersey, brought down by Jonathan Vilma. 14 yards on the catch. And Loomis coming up large right there. Yeah, most of the time it's LJ Smith. He came in with 25 catches, but they've been targeting the backup tight end, Chris Loomis, who's done an excellent job coming underneath and good pass timing uh, in the offense with Hart at quarterback. He gets back, hits, hits his fifth step, ball gone. Miami defenders can't get to him. Another first down. Second catch of the day for Loomis for 24 yards total now. Long count by Hart. Phase on. He do work for 16 yards. Knocked out of bounds by Sean Taylor. And it actually helped running into the back of his own offensive lineman. It got him outside. Watch Faison run right into the back right there of 79. Looks like his backup uh, tackle, and he bounces it right outside McDonald. He bounces off the back of McDonald. It gets him to the outside, to the perimeter, and gets him first down in a big chunk of yardage. There you see Faison rushing 10 for 35 and receiving three for 39. He's really been hurting Miami through the air more than the ground. Sammy McDonald out of Newark, New Jersey, is number 79 through a big block. Empty backfield, dropped by Hart, flushed. He's going to run it. Good job. Down the sideline, getting the first down. And banged out of bounds inside the 15. First down, Rutgers again. He's looking for a penalty, picks up. 15 yards on the play. And Ryan Hart, he wanted to throw it deep. He had somebody down the sideline roll. Knocks him out of bounds. Some poise here. He had a great decision to tuck this football and run. He wanted to get his tight end down the field, but he has enough speed to outrun number 98, Cornelius Green. He wanted to hit right there, but he was in bounds. That's a good hit by Antrell Roll on the sidelines, but a good play by Hart using his composure and his determination to get the corner on Miami. Ball is at the 14 yard line. Inside handoff right pilch for about a yard. Not a lot doing there. How about Hart? Showing that poise. Yeah, he, he wanted to throw it. He, he wasn't looking to, to run it. Hey, somebody get he open. He, he, didn't want it. he did not want to run it initially because he wanted to get rid of the football. But you see, he's taking the ball from their own 29 in seven plays, a 58-yard drive.
but it's very important right now that, that Rutgers gets on the scoreboard. Even if it's a field goal, they'd love a touchdown, but they have to score out of this drive. They haven't been knocking on the door in quite some time. Second down and nine at the 12. All right, pump fake, Statue of Liberty, Faison going the other way, got a block to the edge, he gets hit hard, but it'll be short by about two yards, that'll set up a third and short, picks up seven on that play, roll again with the tackle, number six. Nice play, good play call. We've seen a, a number of plays from this offense today and on special teams, couple different formations, but as you said, Statue of Liberty to the outside, number 22, Faison has the speed in open, field to get the corner on Miami and it brings up a third and very short a third and two and we've got the big bodies coming in again for Rutgers drive started at the 29 yard line with 715 on the clock we're at four minutes now boy I'd love to roll the dice and fake it right here and throw the football on third down oh hit the backfield none of this is going to be happening says Vince Wolfer talk about an explosion Vince Wilfork does a great job of anticipating the snap count. He did it on the first third down, and he just missed it. You see him right there, gets a great jump on the ball, runs right by Marty Pizuka. And, and you, you'd love to see him just fake it there because Vince Wilfork was all over it. Miami, all 11 players, their eyes were in the backfield looking for the run, and that's exactly what he found. Rutgers calls timeout to make sure everything is in order. Sands will attempt a 27-yard field goal. He's got one from 38 back in the second quarter that made it a 10-8 ball game with 4.04 to go. John, your call was dead on the money. A play fake there might have broken wide open. Well, Miami was so determined to stop, stop the run there. You could tell the last third down, they had everybody within two, three yards of the line of scrimmage, and it was just a perfect setup for just to play fake it and let them either break contain or try to hit the tight end or someone out of the backfield. But Miami did a good job of bowing their backs. Hey, it's three minutes and 24 seconds into the third quarter, and Rutgers still with that three-point lead, so you, you got to roll the dice somewhere when you're on top of the number one team in the nation. Never beaten them. 0-9. Miami's 4-0 here at Rutgers Stadium. The last time they met 61-0 at the Orange Bowl last year. Largest margin of victory in the series. From the right hash, here's Ryan Sands, the junior from Shenandoah, PA. Looking for his second field goal. You'll get a great look at it. And he did the fake. Sean Carney pitches it out of bounds. They did roll the dice, but not near enough speed. And Miami was laying in wait. They had they had them outnumbered on that side. One, two, three. They had about six guys recovering to the short side. I don't think that was the call. I mean, they wanted to line up, and if they got the right defense, they were going to use it. But I don't think Sean Carney read that correctly. Matter of fact, I know he didn't read that correctly because Coach Sean was not telling him good job. That's something where you need to come away with points and you can Absolutely. feel the air come out of this stadium because they needed to come away with some points and right there was not the time to fake it. If you're going to roll the dice, you roll it on third down. And if you don't get the right look on fourth down, you don't do anything but kick the field goal. I've, when you look at the replay, it looks like Cardi thought that was going to get eaten alive more when we come back. <clears throat> So Rutgers did not have a good operation on that 27-yard field goal attempt. We're going to take a look at that before long. But interesting that we see a new quarterback in. Derek Crudup is in the game. Ken Dorsey, that last series, we happen to see him heading towards the tunnel. Crudup, sophomore out of Deerfield Beach, Florida. And he's going to hand it to McGahee. McGahee finds room to about the 14-yard line, pick up a five. And it looks like Dorsey's coming right back. And let's check in with Greg Roberts. What do you have, Greg? Well, Dave, you won't see backup Derek Crudup very long. Re-entering the ball game is Ken Dorsey. What happened was he took a hit to his left hand, his non-throwing hand. They took him to the locker room. They taped it up. Now he's back out on the field, and he's back in the huddle. Dave? Greg, thank you very much. He faces a second down and four at the 15-yard line. Tight end in motion is Winston. McGahee. 
And he breaks it off of right guard for first down to the 21 yard line. Picks up six. I think you're going to see a lot of Willis McGahee now in this second half late into the third quarter because Miami is going to use their offensive line to be dominant, especially with Dorsey a little dinged on the left hand. There you see his season stats. He's averaging over 261 yards per game today, only 105 yards, and that's been due to his ineffectiveness of finding a go-to guy, but Rutgers really doing a good job in the back end with their defensive backs. Rutgers led from their first possession, 7-0. Miami took an 8-7 lead on its safety. It's been Rutgers since then, out pattern. Winslow trying to break a tackle and does. 40-45, he is something else. Just the sophomore, Kellen Winslow Jr. Another big play first down Miami, Sean Seabrooks. Stops the play after 27 yards. And a great throw by Dorsey. He hits his tight end, Kellen Winslow, right in stride. And watch him break the tackle of Bender right there on the Miami sideline. He switches the football to the outside and then tries the strip from behind as a Rutgers defender. But a nice job by Dorsey in a lot of pain out there. His non-throwing hand, it could be a wrist. It looked like he took a helmet right on the left wrist. And you can see him just watching the play go down. Seabrook's down on the play for Rutgers. But uh, Dorsey, great throw coming back off the bench. 27 yards on the hookup. Winslow, four catches, 68 yards on the day. 2.06 to go, third quarter. Rutgers led at halftime, 17-14. No scoring so far here in the third quarter. Goes for the strip. And Winslow, nice job, and probably got the win knocked out of him. But let's go back and look at that field goal operation, a 27-yarder. Cardi, I think, sees all the heat coming from his right. Yeah, I'm not sure. It could have been he, he felt pressure, but it could have been a misread going to the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure what happened there, but I know that the head coach on the sideline was not happy, Greg Schiano, in not getting some points. And as you said, he could have felt that heat coming and just got out of there and yelled, fire, fire, but it did not happen. In his mind, he's probably thinking a block field goal taken for six. Let me take this negative yardage play. Take our chances. Pump and go. They're looking deep for Johnson. Good coverage by Rutgers. And Johnson almost makes the catch. The coverage by Brandon Hall. Yeah, Brandon going. Hall did a good job. Going into that stiff wind, it looked like that ball was going to be clearly overthrown. But there's a, a good wind coming from right to left. Hel it held up the football. And it almost gave enough time and for the speed of Andre Johnson to catch up. Good coverage by Brandon Haw. There you see the pump and go by Dorsey. Let's it fly down the right side. And he was within a yard from coming up with a big play for Miami. Approaching two minutes to go here in the third. Winston in motion. Call goes to McGahee for about three to the 48 yard line of my of Rutgers. So to bring up a third down and seven. Rutgers bringing in its nickel package. Two of 12 on third down. That's what Miami is. Yeah, there you see, and they lead the Big East on the season with close to 50% conversions on third down. So right now, minute 30 and 29 and counting for Rutgers. It'll be a huge stand for Rutgers. They can hold Miami short of this first down. Especially after not putting any points on the board. From the Rutgers, 48 blitz. Underneath Winslow, he's short of a first down. Good play by Rutgers Jarvis Johnson, the strong safety. They've been trying to hit that under route all day long to Kellen Winslow, but they've been short of the first down on a couple of occasions. Rutgers has seen that. You see Winslow coming underneath, just a scissors pattern underneath. Kevin Beard and Winslow trying to crisscross each other, try to pick for each other and, and cause some confusion, but they're short, well short of the first down. Here's Capshaw aiming for the near sideline. And it's caught two yards deep by Entrell Roll at punt for 44 yards. Still very much a ball game with 40 seconds to go in the third. Rutgers doing what they can do to hang on to this three point lead and Ken Dorsey on the sideline his left wrist causing him a lot of concern and pain on that sideline. But more importantly, when he looks up at the scoreboard, that's probably causing him more pain. With 40 seconds left to go in the third quarter, he sees his high potent offense down by three points. You don't want to be too guilty of looking way ahead, but you know darn well the folks at Virginia Tech are looking at this. Licking their shops. Oh, goodness gracious. 
Miami trailing by three. <laughs> They've got Pittsburgh tonight. Hey, Pitt's a dangerous club. We've seen them many times. That's going to be a heck of a yes, game tonight. Yes, it will be. Rutgers takes over at its own 20. Momentarily, that, that hole was there, but Rocky McIntosh was there with help from William Joseph. That should be the last play of this third quarter. I would think Rutgers would just let it uh, sure. let it run out, regroup for the fourth quarter, get the crowd back into it, get their thoughts on the sidelines. As you see Ken Dorsey and Winslow talking about that under route they tried on third down, but no answers. Miami has no answers right now because they're down by three, and, and Rutgers really feeling the momentum of this crowd staying ahead of Miami. I would be the first to tell you that I was never expected to put down zeros in the score column for both clubs with Rutgers leading 17-14. No, you're There's right. No way I would have anticipated that. The fourth quarter coming up. Number one, Miami is trailing at Rutgers as we head to the final 15 minutes in Piscataway. Good looking Kirkpatrick Chapel here on the campus of Rutgers University, the State University of New Jersey. The site of our Big East football conference game where Rutgers has a 17-14 lead. You're not dreaming, 17-14, Rutgers leading Miami. Say what? Could have been 24-8. <laughs> Could have been 24-8, you're late, right. Late first half, Nate Jones picks one and goes 100 yards, but there was holding on the far side of the field. Here's Rutgers starting the fourth quarter. Second down and nine at the 21 yard line. Empty backfield as Faison goes in motion. They bring the blitz. There's Vilma. And he got rid of it. Penalty flag. Dennis Hennigan all over that one. Fine call defensively by Randy Shannon, the defensive coordinator for Miami. Well, nobody picks up Jonathan Vilma because it's an empty backfield. Miami brings more people than Rutgers can block. And Ryan Hart tried to do the right thing, get it close to his receiver. Intentional grounding on the offense. Penalty is lost and down at the spot of the pass. Third down. But there was so much pressure up the middle, he couldn't get the ball down the field. And Jonathan Vilma, an excellent play. Watch him right in the middle of your screen. Nobody blocks him because there's not a body to put on him. And Ryan Hart tried to get the football down to the under route, but Vilma was right there. And the intentional call was the, the grounding call was the right call. Bays on the long setback. Two receivers to Hart's right. Freshman Ryan Hart out of Coral Springs, Florida. Got the start today. Looks left. Throws it. Got knocked down. I think Matt Walters may have gotten a piece of it. They were trying a quick slant to Aaron Martin. So that was unproductive. That possession for Rutgers. Been like that the entire fourth quarter. Miami punted four times. Rutgers in the third quarter. They punted three times and then the quarter ran out. And this punt coming up by Barr. It's averaged 38-2 on five kicks to this point. Yeah, look for a big play for special teams by Miami. Ooh, boy, that was terrific penetration in there, but the punt's not a bad one. Back to the 46. And the aforementioned, I was going to say, the aforementioned big play coming on special teams. You almost got it there, John. Good call on that return by Roscoe Parrish. They're going to be in good shape. 40 yards on the punt, a 16-yard return. Great field position for Miami at the Rutgers 38. Three-point lead for Rutgers, 14-44, 41 to go here in the fourth quarter. So we take a look at our Guinness game summary. And Ryan Hart got the start today, his first collegiate start. Numbers not too bad. Got one interception. McGahee, not surprising there, just short of two bills, John. Yeah, he's done an excellent job off of 19 rushes, 179 yards. And he goes in untouched for his lone touchdown. But Ken Dorsey, the big surprise, only 12 of 27, a low percentage for Ken Dorsey, 137 and an interception. But he leads Miami now with excellent field position. Best starting field position for Miami today at the 38. Little play fake. Dorsey, deep sideline, got a man there. And it's Johnson, he's taken out of bounds. Andre Johnson with the catch. And he's knocked out of bounds at the 24 yard line by Nathan Jones. Pick look, up a 13. Look for Miami to come. Come back to that play. Kellen Winslow was wide open down the middle of the football field. Only a two-man route. You see Miami in the second half. They've punted four times. Their longest drive has been seven plays for 48 yards. But look for Miami to cash in here with excellent field position. And they start with 
momentum. Good first down play. Johnson, two catches, 32 yards, top of your screen. McGay, he gets the call. They try to stretch it out. He cuts it in. Does a good job. To the 19-yard line, picks up five. Brought down by Brian Bender. Ken Dorsey's having terrific difficulty handing the football off, especially going to his right, because he has to use his left wrist. He had a helmet right on the wrist about uh, four series ago. He came back into the game, only missed one play, but that exchange from quarterback to running back has been shaky the last couple of handoffs. Almost a minute into the fourth quarter here. Second down and six. Dorsey back to throw. Got a man down there. Touchdown, Miami. It's Johnson. And the Canes take the lead at 20 to 17. A 20 yard hook. What a dart that was. Well, a strike by Ken Dorsey to Andre Johnson. His sixth touchdown, and, and Johnson gets away with a little bit of a push off off the left side. No one sees it. But a strike from Ken Dorsey off play action does an excellent job getting back his feet underneath him and throws a bullet on the short post pattern to Andre Johnson. Point after is good. Didn't take long. 13-56. They had a very short field to go. Dorsey's 19th TD pass, the 6th TD catch by Johnson, and the Canes number one in the nation. They've regained the lead at 21 to 17 here at Rutgers. It has been one interesting day here at the birthplace of college football, Piscataway, New Jersey. Dave Sims, John Kinjemi, Greg Roberts with you. Number one Miami's just regained the lead. 21-17 here at Rutgers as we check out today's storyline, John. It was all Rutgers in the beginning, and it was with the freshman quarterback, Hart to Martin for 40 yards, set up a touchdown. Then they block a punt. Nugent blocks it. Seabrooks carries it in the end zone. McGahee, he's had a big day for Miami on the ground, goes in untouched, and then the strike. On the last Miami offensive play, Dorsey to Johnson on the outside. That's the 16th time in their career they've hooked up, and that ranks very high in Miami history. There you see that ties Gino Toretta and Lamar Thomas right at 16. Only three to go to tie Testa Verde and Michael Irvin. So uh, that combination, Dorsey to Andre Johnson, a big one in Miami history. Boy, that is some history. It <laughs> sure is. What kind of response does Rutgers have here? As Seavers kicks it off. And Jones going to bring it out. Oh, he got net there. Actually, I believe that was Faison on the return. Faison on the return, brought down by Leon Williams. Field position. Advantage Miami at the 10 yard line. Well, Dave, we talked about it on the break. You know, indecision by Rutgers. He probably should have stayed in the end zone. They get the ball right at the 10 yard line with a big play by Williams, but you can almost feel it. Now, here comes a big play by the defense, or they block a punt on special teams. And Rutgers has played so well in this football game to only be down by four. You know, let's see what happens now. They have to get a first down to get out of the deep penetration by Miami's defense. Ted Trump back at quarterback. Say, uh oh, second time for him. Throws it over the middle. Incomplete. Threw it in the general direction of Chris Loomis. He did a good job to get rid of it. Great pressure that time by 94. William Joseph. He came into the game with 19 pressures. He's added a couple more. And this one on Ted Trump, the senior quarterback, who's back into the football game. Trump passing today. 104 for seven yards. Second time we've seen him today. What a spot this is for the senior. He's out of Delran, New Jersey. Walk on in 2000. Did not play. Came over from the baseball team. Played for Freddie Hill. He's a USA Today baseball All-American in high school. Second and 10 from the 10. Inside handoff. Pilch going nowhere. Rocky McIntosh with the tackle for Miami. And he can feel the emotional surge coming from the Miami defensive unit. You can feel it on defense because that's exactly where they turned it up a notch coming out from halftime. A couple three and outs and the defense set the tone in this second half. It really looked like a big uh, hole to run in, but it was filled quite quickly by McIntosh, number 50. And then you see the white shirts, the team speed. And there on the sidelines, the freshman quarterback, Ryan Hart, who's had a nice afternoon against a very tough Miami defense, a stingy Miami defense. Play clock at nine, six now. Trump, big play here for Rutgers. Out, oh man, that's a pick. Out of bounds, 21-yard line. Kelly Jennings. 
But the interception, boy, that was not a good pass. First pick of the season for Jennings, a redshirt freshman out of Live Oak, Florida. We talked about it. You could feel that the bad play was coming, and, and that thing was shot a couple times right into the number 22, Kelly Jennings, just waiting for the football on the sideline. Just an ill-advised throw. You're better off throwing that over your bench and bringing the punting unit out, but a bad throw by the quarterback, Ted Trump. And, you know, it's tough to come in off the bench on a cold day against the wind and try something on third down. And Hart, that'll get him warming up on the sidelines to get back in. But Miami may make him pay right here. See if they go deep after the turnover. Tight end. Wasting no time. Throwing sideline gathers at the five. Little dazzle. Step. Drives to the one-yard line. First and goal, Miami. You know, I saw Boyd Daller upstairs scouting for the Packers. And so reminiscent of the old Packer teams after turnover. Hey, go deep. Go for the jugular. Step on the throat. It's exactly what Miami did. They hurt him last time with great field position. Now they go outside to Jason Gathers out of the backfield. He had his tight end wide open again. Kellen Winslow decides to check it down to the former wideout. Now turned running back. Jason Gathers. It gets him inside the two-yard line. 20 yards on that pick up together. Looks like Miami may take a timeout when this play clock goes down to around uh, four or three seconds. And Ken Dorsey calls a timeout, 12 16 to go. First timeout called by the Canes. Gathers' first catch of the day was an impressive one, and Larry Coker and his crew looking to extend this lead. Rutgers got the scoring going, took the uh, early on the first drive, 7-0 on a Pittman one-yard run, and a big catch from Martin, a 40-yarder. Martin said, I think, two catches since then, tops. Sievers with a 29-yard field goal, closed out the scoring in the first quarter, 7-3. Sievers got a, another field goal, 24-yarder in the second quarter, 7-6, then a safety as Pittman threw it out of the end zone after a bad snap. So it's 8-7. Sands with a field goal for Rutgers, 10-8 Rutgers. They get a Seabrooks return of a blocked punt, 17-8 Rutgers. And then late in the first half, an interception taking 100 yards, but it was called back because of a hold. And it was 17-14 after McGahey run. That's what it was at halftime. Right now, let's take a look at the Dodge Tough Player of the Game. Jason Nugent with the punt right here. Yeah, and Seabrooks, punt, and Seabrooks returns it. Picks it up for the touchdown. That was the, the player of the game. Nugent does a nice job, and Miami knocking at the door right here. First and goal at the two. McGay, he caught in the backfield by Holman. He did well to get maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Brian Holman's had about eight, nine tackles today. Well, Dave, the last couple of games for Miami, they've been pushed to the brink by Florida State. They have to come back 13 points down in the fourth quarter. West Virginia had them, you know, nip and tuck into the third quarter. And now they get into Rutgers on the road. And Rutgers putting up a difficult stand for Miami, 21-17. And you see McGahee getting gang tackled. It was all led by Holman, number 49. Offset eye to the right. The fullback is Kyle Cobia. McGahee. Powers through one tackle. I don't think they're going to give him a touchdown. No, they're not. He's just inside the one yard line of one yard pickup. It'll be third and goal at the one. Gary Brackett with the tackle. Well, these are the toughest yards to get when you're on offense as a tailback, especially when you're running to the football, as Rutgers did on the last two downs. Great initial hit by 23. Sean Seabrooks coming in from that free safety spot. Rutgers fans try to urge that defensive unit on. Normally you'd say maybe how about throwing the football, but Miami's so dominant and so big up front. I see him running it, running it again. That they do, Kyle Kobe. He got stopped. There's no signal of a touchdown. He stopped. Oh, no question about it. The line judge was all over that one. Wayne Mackey. He saw it all away. Knows just look at that. Look at that shot. Six, seven inches from a touchdown. And no hesitation by Larry Coker. He's not sending in the uh, the field goal unit. They're going to go for it on fourth down. So fourth and goal. Miami, 40% on fourth down conversions. That's the big one here. Got to believe McGahee's going to get it. Two tight ends go to the right. Yeah, you see him going over the top. Play fake. 
tight end, wide open. Winslow, touchdown Miami. Boy, that was way easy. Kellen Winslow, his fifth TD catch of the season. Dorsey's 20th TD pass. And it's 27-17 Miami. Nice pitch and catch by Ken Dorsey and his tight end, Kellen Winslow. Nobody on the outside. You see 41 bracket, the middle linebacker, three or four steps behind that tight end. That's his responsibility. Doesn't get there. Miami looking to push it to an 11-point lead. Here's Severs. Has missed just two points after on the season. And he bangs it through. It's 28 to 17, 10 13 to go. And as far as Kellen Winslow is concerned, this one is over. 10 13 to go here from Rutgers. Today's Big East football conference game has been brought to you by Cooper Tire, proud to be the official tire of the Big East Conference. Cooper Tires don't give up a thing. Discover Card, it pays to discover. Dodge, you can take life as it comes or grab life by the horns. Dodge. Guinness Draft Stout, enjoyed responsibly the world over. The United States Army, an army of one. And by AT&T Wireless, AT&T Wireless brings you M-Life, your mobile life made better. 10-13 to go. Fourth quarter in Greg Schiano's club, down 11 now. They led by as many as nine at 17-8 back in the second quarter. But right now, going into a fairly stiffen, uh, stiffened wind here at Rutgers Stadium on this brisk, cool day. There's Seavers. Kicking this one, and Faison, oh boy, fumbled it. And now it has to be taken by one of the receivers, Tucker. Tucker went back to say, hey man, keep it right here. Then it bounces off of Faison's hands, and then Tucker had to bring it out. Almost a bad play gone worse that time. You see Scott on the coverage for Miami, but again, Rutgers will start inside the 10 yard line. This time at the nine, the last possession started at the 10, and it was an interception by Ted Trump that led to Miami's score to push this score to 28-17. And now you'll see the freshman Ryan Hart back in the game for Rutgers. Miami's got 10 points off of turnovers today. Rutgers starts at its own nine. Throwing into the win. Faison, nice job to about the 14-yard line. Check that, that's Pittman. Brought down by D.J. Williams. Pittman trying to find some running room in the uh, middle of that Miami defense, but it'll look to Ryan Hart now to try to put the football up a little bit more than and press the issue through the air, even though they're going against a stiff breeze. Time running out on the Rutgers offense, 938 and counting. Pittman has the first score of the day, one yard run back in the first quarter. Empty backfield, they blitz last time. Here comes Vilma. Hart steps, got nowhere to run, and he's buried. Boy, he got ragged out by Vince Wolfer. Penalty, penalty down field on the play. Sideline warning against Rutgers. That is their first warning. All right, so the sack lives. And there's a look at Ken Dorsey. Yeah, on that last touchdown pass, the, the one yarder to Winslow, he breaks the Big East touchdown record set by Donovan McNabb. There you see 78 career touchdown passes. And, and what a quarterback and what a career he's had, only losing one game. Uh, you know, you got to take a look around the country when you talk Heisman trophies. Uh, Ken Dorsey finished third last year. Uh, he's got to be that front runner because no one really stepping out in you front bet. and taking it. You know, he's got to be mentioned in the top two or three people in the country. And with his record and what he's done for this Miami offense and all the records he's set at Miami, you talk about quarterback you. Well, he is quarterback you right now. They've had a lot of very productive quarterbacks down at the University of Miami. Bernie Kosar, Jim Kelly. Back, uh, go back to Fran Kersey, George Myra. 
Yeah, you know, you, you really start talking about quarterback, you, you know, Fran Kersey and Myra. Uh, but in the modern day, you know, mm -hmm. you start with Kelly and Kozar. They really brought this program back to prominence. And it wasn't very popular to go to Miami in the late 70s and early 80s. And they, they kind of kept the hometown crowd there, the, the athletes. And, and Dorsey coming from California, that became popular. Uh, to get the, you know, around the country, the Texas and Ca California and New Jersey and uh, Ohio and Pennsylvania players coming down to Miami. And there you see the AT&T player of the game, Ken Dorsey, 16 of 31 for 192. But the two touchdowns coming in uh, the second half, big times in the second half. First to his favorite receiver outside Johnson, then to his tight end Winslow. Coming up on nine minutes to go. Miami up 11. And Hart needs a big throw here and almost picked. Tried to get it to Aaron Martin. And boy, I tell you, Ryan Hart got blasted. Kenny, Kelly Jennings on the coverage. This is one heck of a team to have to make your collegiate debut against for Ryan Hart. Yeah, and, and to say he did an admirable job is, is saying it lightly. I thought he played a, a very good football game coming in and starting against a very tough defense, you know, that ranks the, more than. Uh, highly more in the top 10 nationally in a lot of categories. Yes, sir. 38-5 is Barr's average on six punts with a long of 54. Five yards deep. They got it. Oh! Penalty flag on that one. As the kicker goes down, doesn't get a good roll on it to the 37-yard line. Roughing the kicker on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. First down. And they roughed the kicker. And it looked like they didn't get a piece of the football either, Dave. You bet. Here's the key now. Again, a stiff wind right in the face of Rutgers. And that's uh, John Taylor. Six. Yes, sir. And Maurice Sykes back there. I'm not sure if he was blocked into the kicker or not. It looked like he was pushed yeah. into him. But it was, a, it was a good call. Definitely roughing the kicker. Pushes the ball to the 25 yard line. 12 penalties for 102 yards against Miami. The Rutgers first and 10, 25 yard line. Hart throws underneath, hit off the pads of the receiver. That's Loomis. Vilma had decent coverage. And Rutgers fortunate that ball didn't bounce straight up in the air because Vilma walks home for, with six. Yeah, there was been a couple tip balls that have bounced straight up in the air and Miami didn't get them. But right now, Ryan Hart had that one very fortunate for him. Go to the ground untouched by a Miami defender. Ken Dorsey with two fourth quarter touchdowns. Touchdown passes. Extended the lead. And gave Miami the lead at up to 28 to 17. Faison, uh, let's see, lost about a half a yard. Well, Dave, Penetration by the front lines. What really it, turned this game, you know, Miami's defense came out after halftime and really set a precedent. They went three and out back-to-back -back times and started gaining that uh, field position battle. And Miami's offense did an excellent job of taking advantage of where they got the football and the opportunities in that second half. And that guy right there, 75, Vince Wolfork, a big part of this defense of turnaround in the second half. Hart 9 of 19 for 110 is yardage plus an interception. Miami rushes four. Look out, backside, balls up in the air, jump ball, it is picked off. 37 yard line, coming down the sideline. And they're gonna say he is out of bounds. The pick by Alfonso Marshall. Marshall, a sophomore from Pulaston, Florida, his first pick of the season, a sophomore. And that was an absolute gimme. We the talked about tip balls, Dave. Uh, very fortunate for Rutgers early in the game. None of them were picked off when there was a tip ball. Great pressure by Orion Harris, number 92. He was untouched going to the quarterback. Ryan Hart delivers a big shot, causes the fumble, causes the ball to go up in the air, and then great concentration by Alfonso Marshall. Takes it to the near side, steps out of bounds around the four-yard line, finally tackled by 77, Rich McManus. But Rutgers finding a way in this fourth quarter not to extend their lead, but to get behind Miami 28 to 17. And Miami again inside the five yard line. In the first seven games, Miami came up with six interceptions. Today, they uh, split the difference and get three against Rutgers. 
McGee gets the call. And he's in. Touchdown, Miami. It was 17-14 at the half. Since then, it's all Miami now, 34-17. to Willis McGahee going in again. As you see, Ken Dorsey on the sidelines. Very workmanlike day for him. Injured his left wrist. But you see McGahee on the left side. Nice block in front by Kobe, number 40, to get him into the end zone. McGahee's second TD run today. Point after, it's on the money. So Miami 35 to 17 they have poured it on here in the fourth quarter three scores in the fourth and we'll take a timeout with number one leading here at Rutgers. Once a 17-8 Rutgers lead now is all Miami 35-17 and Willis McGee our Outback Steakhouse outstanding back of the game it was set up by a Marshall interception and made it look real easy with McGee. Pretty much walking in here. Good blocking. Yeah, great blocking up front. Chris Myers finishing off, walling off that Rutgers defensive line. It springs Willis McGahee in for his second touchdown. But a terrific afternoon for Willis McGahee running the football. And you saw him on the sidelines with the now Giants tight end, Jeremy Shockey, in for the game. And, and all smiles now on the Miami sideline. 21 fourth quarter points by the Kings. High short kick. Taken at the 11. Oh! that 58 goodness gracious Weaver coming down on Ooh. special teams nobody touches him until he gets to the returner number 29 it looks like for Miami also down James Scott on the play man oh man Weaver Cha Ching this young man is down took a good part of that blow James Scott Wow Miami was looking for somebody on special teams to make a play, and I think they found him with the game in hand, 35-17, right side of your screen. Weaver, 58, coming in untouched, and it looked like on the bottom of the yes, pile, sir. 29, James Scott, his left shoulder was hit, it looked like by a leg. Yeah, Sean Tucker's leg, I think, whipped him and got him right in the head. He's not moving down on that sideline or on the field. It looked like the left side for James Scott. And that's a playmaker for Miami. He's, he's played a number of positions over the last couple of years. He's been a tailback. He's been a defensive back. He's great on special teams. 27 unanswered points by Miami. Turn this game around. They've got three scores here in the fourth quarter. Two uh, Dorsey TD passes, one to Johnson, one to Winslow, and a McGahee run. And McGahee, 23 carries for a buck 87 and two touchdowns. See if we can see what happens here to Scott. There's the hit right there, but and then right it, there, the neck, it's his head. Let me tell you something. The first hit was really bad, and it was exacerbated by the yes. second one. The second one really brought his, his head all the way down to his right shoulder. That first one was just amazing. He's moving his he's moving his arms, uh, his right arm, you can see there. Dr. John Uribe and Scott McGonigal, team trainer, on site. And that's one injury. When you get into that neck area. Ooh, that's never it's, good. It's never good. And it's great to see him moving with his own by his own power. That was a vicious, vicious collision. Jarrell Weaver, number 58, just blew it up. Sean Tucker back on kick return, and that was not, not pretty. A reminder about our activities next week. It'll be the Boston College Eagles traveling to Morgantown. They'll face Avon Coburn and the Mountaineers from West Virginia, or the Temple Owls going to head to Pittsburgh, take on Rod Rutherford and the Pittsburgh Panthers. BC West Virginia or Temple at Pittsburgh next Saturday afternoon, starting at noon. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Thankfully, the young man is walking off with some help. It's James Scott, back up defensive back. Scott's a 6'2", 194-pound senior out of Crescent City, Florida. Empty backfield for Miami. Tight end left way too soon. That play's going to get stopped. 
That was Chris Loomis, the sophomore from Maple Shade, New Jersey. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five yard penalty, remains first down. John, let me get your thoughts on a couple of things. You've got uh, Boston College at Notre Dame today. Uh, which is underway. What do you think of that game? Well, I think Boston College played such a tough game last week against Pittsburgh and, and losing in overtime and going on the road to Notre Dame. It's, it's hard to go against Notre Dame and what they've done. They found a way to win football games, and I, I think Notre Dame will continue to, to win. I think it's going to be a tough football, physical football game. It always is. First and long here for Rutgers. Another penalty flag. Wheels start to come off for Rutgers. Other action tonight in the Big East Syracuse at Central Florida. Boy, the Cuse, one of the worst years ever. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense, five yard penalty, remains first down. Pretty good chance uh, Howard Blackwood was involved there. Howard played a pretty good game today. And you hate to see Rutgers right now uh, fall apart at the seams. You want to yep. see them finish this football game because they've done a nice job uh, in the first half going in with a three point lead and they recruit you know the state of Florida very heavily and they want to keep the kids excited about coming to Rutgers from the state of New Jersey. So they want to get you know finish this football game off and, and be very respectable. Here's Hart. Sideline ball. Ooh. Good thing he got some elevation on that one. 7.41 to go here in the fourth quarter. Rutgers had a 17-8 lead since then. It's all Miami, the number one team flexing its muscles here in the fourth quarter. Dave Sims with John Kinjemi and Greg Roberts. Ken Dorsey with two TD passes here in the fourth. Willis McGahee with a one-yard run after a Marshall interception set him up with a short drive. And that's how we've reached this score. Here's some of the productivity today. Dorsey just shy of 200 yards. Ditto McGahee. Ryan Hart in his first collegiate start. Well, at least you know uh, what you got starting against the number one team. I mean, they put you to the test. And another tackle for a loss there. That was Vince Wolford. Yeah, double wide making himself known in this second half. I thought the second half turnaround for Miami really started on defense. They did a terrific job of coming out and establishing themselves against the Rutgers offense. Rutgers had a three point lead coming out of halftime and they never really got going offensively. I thought this Miami defense really bowed its back and started the momentum to Miami and then Ken Dorsey and Willis McGahee really finished up in the fourth quarter that they have and they have lived at this uh, deep end of the field Rutgers throwing into the wind. They rush for short pass almost a great catch by Martin on the sideline ball was behind him. That will bring on the punt team. The body language a drastic change from about an hour and a half ago yeah, and the excitement in this crowd no is doubt. really the the air has been let out of the stadium because they, these fans were getting quite boisterous and loud and and getting into the football game. But ever since Miami turned to the fourth quarter and they really turned it on with some turnovers and defensive pressure. Seabrooks returned a block punt. They did 17 8 to 17 to go in the second quarter. High snap hard does a good job. Not a bad kick, but Miami's still going to be in great shape. Even with the roll, they're going to start it at the 46 yard line. Forty yards on a punt. As we check out the Ameritrade scoreboard. Temple puts points up on the board, but way too late. 46-20 Mountaineers. Mountaineers having a very successful season. DC leading at Notre Dame. Boston College 0 and 3 in the conference, 4 and 3. And Pittsburgh, this is a big game in the Big East Conference. Huge. Pittsburgh 3 and 0. Virginia Tech 3 and 0. Along with Miami atop the Big East Conference. Yeah, and Crudup gets into the game day for Ken Dorsey, who, who is a little banged around today. Got that left wrist uh, injured uh, in the second half. Thought they were going to throw hand off, but Crudup buying some time now. Doing a heck of a job, and then he's finally sacked by Raheem Moore all the way back to the 40 yard line. 35 17 as we approach six minutes to go. There you see a good look at Derek Crudup out of Deerfield Beach High School. 
only a sophomore, and that's the biggest question Miami will have next year. How do you, repl you replace a Ken Dorsey? And there's going to be a number of guys oh. uh, lining up for that job, and there's uh, the, the front runner right there, number 18. 14 yard loss on this on that last play. Second and 23 at the 41. On the draw to Jarrett Payton. Payton takes it to the 45 yard line. We check in with Greg Roberts. Well, Dave, nothing lasts forever. Of course, this is Ken Dorsey's final season at the helm for the Miami Hurricanes. But don't feel sorry for Miami. You see their backup, Derek Crudup. He's just a sophomore. He has two years remaining. And don't forget about Brock Berlin, the transfer from the Florida Gators. He's sitting out this year, and they say he's tearing it up in practice. And the Hurricanes have already received a verbal commitment from Kyle Wright, who just happens to be the number one prep quarterback in the country. So, guys, I think it's just a situation of next. That's exactly right. 5.15, Greg, thank you very much. Crudup back to throw. Screen to Peyton on the right side. Got blockers. Peyton on the cutback. High school soccer player. Wow, look at that leg drive the last five yards to leave them short by about a yard for first down. Jared Peyton showing his determination that got from his mom and dad, Gary Brackett, with the tackle. Gain of 16. Yeah, nice finish to this catch by Peyton. Watch him just keep his legs pumping and going towards the first down will bring up a fourth and probably a long two, but an excellent run after catch by Jared Peyton. Probably one of the most unselfish players on this team. He's played fullback, he's played tailback, he's run down on kicks, he's caught kicks, he's done just about everything in his career at Miami. Junior out of Arlington Heights in Illinois, just outside of Chicago. They do go for it in the fourth down, and Peyton gets the first down. May have only gotten it by a couple of inches, but it looks like he got the first down nonetheless as we check out the Ameritrade scoreboard. Top 25, Iowa victorious at, against Wisconsin and in Iowa City. Michigan blows out Michigan State. Kansas State, oof, that's at halftime over wow. Kansas. Bowling Green en route to keeping its unbeaten season alive. Iowa State, Missouri putting up a pretty good fight second quarter. Two pretty good teams right there. I tell you what, those two quarterbacks at Missouri and Iowa State, they can make an exciting game. 27-21 you see in the second quarter. All right, tonight Virginia Tech and Hosting Pittsburgh. the Panthers. What do you think of that game? I think it's going to be all Virginia Tech. I think they're going to get a little bit of home cooking. And I know that Panther defense has been playing well, but they will be tested on the ground. A lot of running in that one. Virginia Tech, fabulous rushing team. Number two in the conference, number 10 nationally. West Virginia, the number one rushing team in the country, 305 and change, followed by Virginia Tech is number 10 and Miami's number 29, number three in the conference. There you see total yards this quarter Miami 71 and Rutgers going backwards at minus two and you see that Miami offense huddled on the sidelines. I think they'll continue to try to churn this clock and, and get out of uh, the state of New Jersey with this 35 to 17 lead. Get back to Miami, get healthy and get ready for the rest of the season. And Rutgers, uh, you know, they have nothing to be ashamed about. They go into the halftime up by three points. Could have been bigger on that on that interception that was called back. You know, right at the uh, at the goal line, it goes 100 yards the other way and it really a 14 point turnaround. No doubt about it. Far side, there was a hold. Nate Jones, 100 yards on the return. And that could have really, really changed things around as it was, 17-14. That, cannon, that cannon's got to be kept quiet in the second half. That's got to be a cold spot right there. Especially now, well, the sun making a reappearance first time in a long time. Receivers are going to be looking back into the sun for Miami. Jared Payton for about two. Tackled in there by Brian Bender. As a look at updated to the minute standings with the Mountaineer win over Temple. Mountaineers very much in it at three and one. West Virginia still has to play Pittsburgh and they have to play at Virginia Tech. Yeah, it's going to be a great finish to this Big East because Miami and Virginia Tech, as everybody knows, they end the season playing to get, uh, against each other. And December 7th. That's going to be a huge, huge game. 
Crudup to throw. Got a man throws it behind. That's going to be a six spot right there for Miami. Touchdown, Canes. Touchdown for Miami. And an easy pitch and catch to the backup tight end, David Williams. David Williams with his first TD catch of the season out of Northwestern High School in Miami. 6'3", 220, a sophomore. Yeah, and actually the ball, as you said, was well behind David Williams. It looked like Credit was going to throw to the ball to the outside. He had the first down in the flat. He, he didn't look to the flat. He looked to push the ball up the field. You make a play on the, on the ball to Jarvis Johnson where he thought it was going to be thrown, but a better reaction to the ball by Williams, and it ends up pushing the score to Miami 42, Rutgers 17. Nice shot by Capstraw on the high snap. But he put it down in time. Credit for Credit. That's his second TD pass of the season. And he actually wanted to go to the flat, but kept his eyes down the football field. Finds Williams for the easy pitch and catch. Miami 42-17 with 3.16 left to go in the game. So this was, uh, this game has had a huge turnaround and well, we 28 saw, fourth quarter points. Yeah, we saw the goose eggs in the third quarter and we wondered how that could be. And Miami makes up for it in the fourth quarter with 28 unanswered. And it all started on the defensive side of the ball. There you see the back of William Joseph, number 94. You got to give credit to Matt Walters and Green up front, Cornelius and Jamal respectively, Andrew Williams, Vince Wilfork. Harris had a big hit on Ryan to, to cause an interception. Uh, Alf Alfonso Marshall was the recipient of that big hit. And there you see Jeremy Shockey, the former Canes tight end on the sidelines, giving some of his wealth of knowledge, passing it down to Eric Winston, the backup tight end, number 87. What a career, a short career he had at Miami, but what an impact. And he's battling turf toe right now with the New York Giants. Giants play Jacksonville up the road at Giants Stadium Sunday night. 42 to 17, 28 fourth quarter points by the Canes. Shockey talked about the Philadelphia Eagles going in the last Monday night's game, saying their back defensive secondary is overrated. They need to get on that ball. <laughs> A little that's cavalier right. attitude that's down right. there by Tucker. I know the game's out of hand now, but boy, you don't want to give away a cheap six like that. Well, offensively, this talent for the Canes, boy, wow. When they get it rolling, they can uh, put some points on that scoreboard. Larry Coker will continue his screen, his string of victories. He has not tasted defeat as a head coach, and uh, what a start to his career as a head coach. A late start for Larry Coker, but uh, inherits a team that he cultivates and, and moved his coaching staff the way he wanted to, and he's done an absolutely fabulous job on the, on the as a head coach for Miami. 42-17. Pittman gets a carry here. Oh, thanks to the ball. booth, Bob Anderson, our stage manager, Rich Freesha. Jeremy Waxman doing the stats, and Aaron Fenster doing the spotting here as we inside three minutes to go. 42 17 BCS standings. I tell you what, I'm talking to your, your, the guys you know from Miami on the radio crew. They said down in Miami, people are really concerned about the on charging Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Yeah, they're, they've got the. Uh, the pom-poms out for Boston College today, that's for <laughs> sure. Yeah, buddy. Still got a long ways to go. And, and you're right, there's still a lot of football left, but Miami could conceivably win today 42 to 17 at Rutgers. Notre Dame could win by a point and probably move ahead of Miami just because of the caliber of, of uh, Boston College. Oklahoma. Still facing uh, the remaining schedule in the Big 12 in addition to the championship game in that conference. 42-17. Rutgers will go to 1-8, 0-5 in the conference. Miami's going to go to 8-0, 4-0 in the Big East play. Hart throws an out pattern and throwing into the wind. John, that's something we noticed when we were walking the field before the uh, before the game, throwing into the wind down on Rutgers uh, at the field here at Rutgers Stadium, a little tough. Yeah, it was gonna be a tough day for the quarterbacks. And Miami remaining their schedule, you see they go to Knoxville at Tennessee. And Tennessee's a little bit down, but that they could still muster a big night against Miami. I'm sure that place will be rocking. Then they get Pittsburgh on a Thursday night, and then they play Syracuse and then Virginia Tech. 
Get Syracuse in an extraordinarily down year. That'll be up at the Carrier Dome. Pretty good punt there. Beard Bobble make that parish. Doubling back and there's a penalty flag, but he's going to pick up a wall. A couple of really good blocks. And he's gone. Just a matter of who the penalty is against. That was a brilliant play by Roscoe Parrish. Just brilliant. Well, you can see the athleticism on number one. We first saw him at Temple. 30 early, yards. Yeah, early in the season. And uh, he had some big plays in that game, but it looks like everything's going to be coming back against Miami. We'll wait for the officials to, to feel this out. There's a couple yellow hankies There's on the field. One, two, near side and far side. Legal block in the back. 38 yard punt and a 66 yard return for six, but it's brought back both infractions against Miami. Well, you hate to see that the a lot of penalties against Miami. They lead the, lead the Big East in penalty There's yards. Penalties during the return holding on the return team. That penalty is declined. Illegal block in the back on the return team. That penalty will be accepted. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Dave, you know, you talk about penalties. That's something that could come back to haunt Miami sure in a enough. game where, they, where they're in with the big boys like Virginia Tech or even in a night game against Pittsburgh or when they play on the road against Tennessee and you're down in Knoxville with those SEC officials, anything could happen. So uh, you never know what could happen on the road again, you know, for Miami. They have to clean up the penalty issue, though, because there's a lot of times in a game where you're playing a tight football game, you get uh, 10, 11, 12 penalties a game, you're not going to win. That's right. No, no room for uh, no margin of error. Jared Payton. Payton's a good back, but I tell you, that's you know, McGee. He runs through that play. He's and through the back got, end yeah, of it. Yeah, he, he probably picks up another 20. It's not a big margin of uh, separating the two as we look at Oklahoma's remaining schedule and ND. AM Baylor, Texas Tech, Okie State. Wow, Navy Rutgers and Southern yeah. Cal. Southern Cal could be, particularly it's at uh, LA, in LA, and Carson Palmer having a very good season. Yeah, if you're looking for Notre Dame to trip, it's today or the last game on the road at USC. There's Peyton. Great determination. Looks familiar, doesn't it? It sure does. <laughs> what a great run. Outstanding. He'll Penalties get. 13 for a buck 20 for Miami, John. Yeah, it's, it's really, really a, a telltale sign of Miami. You, you don't want to have that happen. And sometimes that's, you know, being aggressive. But other times it's just bad plays and bad decisions. Sure. And, and the only thing you can do is coach against that and, and really work on that in practice and, and things like that happen. But you go against a good, good quality team, especially on the road, that could, that could be enough to, to lose a football game. How about these numbers? This is the 800th game in the history of Miami football and win number 500. And that will do it. The final play. Larry Coker's club got put to the test through the first half, but in the fourth quarter, 28 points. They come away with a 42-17 lead. And the victory here, Piscataway against Greg Schiano and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Let's look at with David Williams, number 82, got that last touchdown. And once again, a final score, Miami 42, Rutgers 17. Make sure you join us next week. Boston College traveling to West Virginia or Temple heading to Pittsburgh. We'll have all the action beginning at noon Eastern time. For John Kinjemi, Greg Roberts, and our entire Big East crew, I'm Dave Sims. This has been a presentation of ESPN Plus, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports television. Number one, Miami prevails once again by the final of 42 to 17. Have a good day, everybody. We'll see you next week.